Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. What are your superpowers again? I podcast. <laughs> Great. Hello, everybody. My name is Griffin Newman. Great. David Sims. That's me. We're hashtag the two friends. Unite the two. <laughs> you can't podcast the world alone. You need two. Might be temporary. <laughs> A be temporary. Uh, this is a podcast called Blank Check with Griffin and David. My man. My man right here. Uh, we are each other's men. Booyah. I'm going to get him all out of the way. My yeah. man. All these great lines. Just like a bat. My man. I hear you talk to fish. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a podcast about filmography. Filmography is directors who have massive success early on in their careers and grant a series of blank checks. Make whatever crazy passion projects they want. David is cleaning his eyes. Out of my eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very dramatically. Sort of daintily. Casting it off. Uh, sometimes those checks clear and sometimes they bounce. Baby. Sometimes they unite. The bounce, I don't know. Yeah. Now, this is a, a kind of stealth miniseries that we've been doing. That we sort of backed into. We backed into. But it's fun. Yes. The E-U-D-C-E-U, the What's extended it? universe of Detective Comics Extended Universe. Great. No, because it came out that DCEU was a false term. That, that yeah, was made they up. don't actually use that. Right. So why don't we just create a new term? Well, I, I've stopped using it in my writing, and I just refer to like the DC universe because yeah. like it's dumb. Extended universe? It doesn't make any sense. No. Well, I think... What's the, an extension of? I think MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Makes sense. Cinematic. I get it. Right. right. So you're talking about the movie universe of the Marvel comics. Okay, but DCU, which is used for like the comic universe, the DC universe, you can't put another C in there because you already got a C. It sounds goofy if you go DCCU. It sounds okay. It sounds It's like the, the Dimitri Martin joke about trying to buy uh, B batteries when you have a stutter. <laughs> okay. I don't remember. I'd like to buy B batteries, please. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> DCCU, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So they were like, uh, E, extended? But, like, someone just said that, and then it Entertainment became Weekly. canon. Right, yeah. right, so I'm saying, let's establish a new canon here. The E-U-D-C-E-U. That just rolls off O-M. the tongue. What, a, what was that? O-M? O-M. The Extended Universe of DC Extended Universe of Movies. Okay, so it's the. This t- is what we're leading with. The T E U D C E U M. So we did a like jokey podcast about Batman versus Superman, and now we just have to review every single one All of, of these things. That's, but, that's that's what's happening. That's what's folks. happening. Just just FYI, right? Because um, David refuses to ever do the Sny Kids miniseries. Yeah, uh, yeah, I refuse. Yeah. We'll break it down one day. Will we? We will break it down one day. Will we? Don't you want to fly with the... The, the Alza guy who? Yeah. I mean, sure. The, the Guardian... What, the Guardians, Legend of the Guardians. Legend of the Guardians. The owls They're the Owls of, of Gahu. Yes. Could've, the Justice League could have learned some lessons from the Owls of Gahu. Those all, alt-right owls. <laughs> uh, so the, this is kind of the movie that all these movies that we've been talking about has been building up to. Yeah, except no, it isn't. That's not true. In theory. In theory, yes, but actually not. In terms of like... Like if you would run this right, then yes, this would be the convergence point. I'm, I'm saying in terms of investor phone calls. Sure. But I mean... And the, uh, in uh, 2017, we're going to have Justice League and that's going to be the payoff for everything we've been working on. That's definitely what like the, the WB executive said to their investors like four years ago. Right. And then we're going to make the highest grossing movie of all time. It's called Justice League. That's coming in 2017. Um, now when Marvel did this, who DC are copying, yes, they had your Iron Man, Hulk, Iron Man 2, and then, you know, they were like, okay, 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 we're going to build up to a team movie. They had Thor. They had Thor. They had Captain America. And, then and so now they had everyone ready right. to put them all together in Avengers. They didn't introduce anyone new in Avengers except for like Hawkeye. You know, had like, his Thor scene, but essentially was, was being set up in that. 
New, exactly right but you know what i mean like they didn't have to do a yes. lot the idea was just the, the thrill of them all together right the movie hit the ground running whereas with justice league or whatever it was like okay we did a superman movie okay mm-hmm. that we people did, didn't like that people didn't like so we did a sequel to that that's batman Largely. and superman and then wonder woman will show up in it right okay okay everyone cool with that yeah all right now we're doing a suicide squad movie it's unrelated no one in that is going to be in justice league but bartman's in it for a second and flash is in it and he punches a woman in the face no flash is in batman versus superman and in suicide squad Wait, uh, oh yeah i guess we're like catches one second Captain Bumerang. <laughs> but that's the first i literally time forgot about, no 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 costume. no the first time you see him is in batman in versus costume. Superman. no he's in costume he's in his weird future costume sure. when he comes through the party yeah whatever uh yeah so it just but i mean and then they're like then we'll do justice league yeah we have batman we've established him we and we did and they did the kind of, they've movie. established him in media res they've gone right. like here's a batman who's existed for a while we're not really gonna batman wine and dine yeah wonder woman we've established her she showed up in batman versus superman she got her own movie right aquaman we've done no we've no seen work him on him. a cell phone video cyborg we've done no work cell phone on him. video the flash Cell Captain phone Boomerang. video, <laughs> nightmare, Captain Boomerang. And Superman's dead, so we're going to have to bring him back. So essentially, they, instead of just the easy task of like yes. everyone we know comes together, it's more like a guy we know and a girl we know meet three people we don't know and then revive a fourth person we don't know. I mean, we kind of, that we do know. Correct. That's, a, that's a, a lot of story. It's a big task. And I'll say uh, I, I kept on having the feeling watching this movie. Uh, ben and I saw it last night. Uh, yeah, I saw it at the press screening on... Um, pr- producer Ben and I saw it last night. Producer Ben and I saw it last night. The Ben Deucer and I saw it last night. Uh, yeah. The Haas saw it with me last night. And... Mr. With, Positive and I saw it last with night. With Draw. Draw, and- Draw Milligan, uh, John, John Braylock, Braylock. And, and Tessa Hirsch. Uh, Tessa Claire Hirsch. Yep. Uh, you, you heard two of those three people on last week's episode. Uh, correct. Yep. Correct. So they're they're real fresh in the noggin. Um, but yeah, those, those three people, uh, saw it with myself and also, uh, the fart detective, oh, fuck. uh, the meat lover, uh, the peeper, yeah. uh, the poet laureate, our finest film critic, soaking wet Benny, dirt bike Benny, birthday Benny, the tiebreaker. I was surprised, David. I really like Cyborg. We're going to talk about Cyborg. Gerard wished him a hello fennel. Okay. They yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. Did. Yeah. But then Bray. Yeah. Called him Professor Crispy. No, and, I, not. and I got mad because I'm, I'm not a professor, nor am I crispy. It was a problem. And, but then Tessa. Mm. Who's lovely. I've pointed it out. Lovely. She pointed out something. Bray's fiance said, no, he's the fuck master. Oh, no. no and I don't say that from professional experience. And maybe Griffin is now backed into a yeah, corner yeah, you because I was the last one to speak mistake. and it sounds gendered. You made a huge I'm mistake. sorry, Griffin. I was going to say that Tessa pointed out that he graduated certain titles over the course of different miniseries. Well, no, now I pointed that out. Mm. Why don't we flip I it? said, and that you, Tessa, you apology said the fuck accepted. I'm thing. glad that you said that out loud so everyone knows that I wasn't meaning anything. By the distribution. Can you just wrap this up? I'm getting out of here. Tells yeah. the course of different <laughs> names, such as Kylo Ben Proust or Ben Kenobi, uh, Ben I Shyamalan, yeah. uh, Ben Say, Say Benny Thing, uh, uh, Ailey Ben's with a dollar sign. Sure. War, uh, War, Warhaz. War, Warhaz, uh, uh Purdue Urbain, and then also, of course, uh, uh, B-19, the Fennel Maker. Ben 19, the Fennel Maker. Damn right. Uh, we we saw the movie, and you, you went to a critic screening. I went because to critic fancy, screening. Humble Brad, uh, I sat with the past and future guest Esther Zuckerman. I said Martha to her a lot throughout. Was this a New York film critic circle screening? No, but I am. Let's give you a round fuck, of applause. This is the first episode chronologically we're recording. Thank you. Since you went on vacation, since yep. all this shit has happened. I went on vacation and stayed very quiet. Yeah, you did not break the internet. No, at I had all. one goal. I said, go on vacation, <laughs> don't break the internet. Leave the internet succeeded. unbroken. Unbroken. Mm-hmm. Yes. Angelina Jolie's Unbroken. Yes, yes, I did. Thank you, Ben. I did make the New York Film Critics oh my Circle, God. which is really exciting. We'll be voting a few days after this episode posts on our best films of the year. So will you be, when we're... Shout out to past and future guest Richard Lawson for uh, mentoring me in hey. terms of uh, my yeah. application. Yeah. When, when we do our Blankies episode or our Blanky Award episode, yeah. will you be citing the things you voted for that year? I guess so. I mean, like my winners will in that yeah. will be like whoever i voted for initially in the first round right, right. and because then of then course becomes, candidates get eliminated and yes. you kind of have to pick a maybe you know you have to move your vote maybe if you if you're 
First round, you go Ray Fisher for Cyborg. Round three, you end up having to go Momoa for Aquaman. Yeah, yeah which is fine. It was a good consensus pick. Yeah. My man. <laughs> um... So that's great. No, it was just it was just a regular Warner Brothers critic screening. All the critics were there. All our friends were there. All many past guests on this uh, TV show were there. Not TV show. They united the seventy one. Exactly. <laughs> that was uh, guesstimating. I was with Esther uh, when someone said Mar- Mother Box. I leaned over and I said Martha Box. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a lot of shit like that when Batman. How was- do you know that box? <laughs> <laughs> Who are your boxes? Uh, when Batman did that whole moment, like scene where he just yells at everyone, where he's like, "Do you think Steppenwolf's teaching ethics?" So he's like telling Wonder There's Woman. There's even a fraction of a chance. I, I leaned over. I remember the day Damon Wayans came up to me <laughs> and said, "I'm just gonna do a jazz box." I leaned over to Esther and I said, "He's mansplaining," and Esther laughed out loud. Well, he's Batman splaining. He is I just Batman plus it. You would have gotten one more comedy point if I had been Very there to punch true. up. I'm your Valanche. <laughs> I feel like I had some other great bit with Esther. We had a lot of bits. Uh, Martha Box, though. I'll say, I said they're mostly in silence, but speaking of the beginning of the film. Now, you guys saw it at the Regal Union Square, I believe? Correct. How's it looking these days, the Regal Union Square? I haven't been there in a Pretty while. Pretty solid. Yeah? I Have saw they, like, uh, zero rats. They haven't <laughs> plussed it lately. They haven't, like, they haven't done the like AMC uh, Times Square thing where they like put in some recliners no. or nothing like that. Oh, no. no. The the aisles are so oh, narrow. Oh, yeah, we had a hard time. It, it, was, like, a, it was like an airline. Which, uh, which theater were you in? The big like one. The, the, the really big, big with the one. balcony? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got the tallest man sitting in front of me. Yeah. He was 6'5", like above. Very tall man. And he also then put his hair into a man bun. Oh, I went to see The Square, Ruben Oslund's mm. The Square. Yeah, yeah and which the, you didn't like. I thought it was okay. She thought it was okay. Did I tell you that? Uh, No, I think I saw on your letterbox that you had put it kind of low on your list. Oh, oh, you're keeping tabs. Oh, I keep tabs. I'll say this, uh, you know, because I know Blankies would would sometimes like want to look at my letterbox and be uh, disappointed that it was not uh, high or low. Well, it was not maintained very well. I've become very diligent oh, sure, with letterbox. Sure. You've gotten better because you're trying to keep track, I feel like. Of everything. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. you know, just feel free to check in. I got some hot takes on things like The Boss Baby, which I watched on an airplane. Yeah, which you, you were, like, initially very into. and The then first you kind 30 of minutes I was back. like, why are these fucking assholes not sure. telling me that The Boss Baby is a masterpiece? Right. And then a stunning thing happens. Mm. A shocking, completely unexpected thing happens. The movie continues? It turns out that concept cannot sustain a feature-length film. Stunning! I was totally caught off guard. Mm-hmm. First 30 minutes of Boss Baby rule, though. Okay. Well, I haven't seen it. It's like a fucking UPA cartoon. It's like Gerald McBoing I got to catch up because uh, the critics have an animated feature uh, category. And yes. this is not a fantastic year for animated features. I have seen three animated movies I like, period. Yeah, sure. But like none you like loved, right? Um, my number one movie of the year is called The Lego Batman Movie 3D. Yeah. So you are a turd, my friend. Forgot about that. You have proven yourself to be a real Lego Richard T. Joker. <laughs> I mean, that honestly might be my number one animated movie of the year because your name is my number That's one. That's my number two, but it technically was released last year. In L.A. Right. But not in New York. So right. I'm going to have to ask. Uh, I think for your scene. critics group, you're good, but for the count. Oscars, it qualified last year, which sucks. It did, which was annoying. It's like a dumb move they pulled. Because I think it would have gotten nominated pulled. this year. It might well have. What, yes. what one last year? Was last that? year was, uh, was in there. Uh, Zootopia. Zootopes. One. Zootopes. Anyway. Uh, Captain Underpants is good. Yeah, you, you kind of like that I one. I like that a lot. Those are the three I liked. Uh, the Boss Baby I was watching first 30 minutes, I was like, we got ourselves a nominee. And then, oh boy. That baby will not stop bossing. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm uh, yeah. not into it. No good, very bad. Don't do it. Wreck-It Ralph was good. I know that's an old movie. I saw it recently, <laughs> ben though. Ben lost his fucking mind. Ben lost his fucking mind started texting me at 3 o'clock in the morning because he knew I'd be awake. <laughs> I think yeah. we might talk about this on a later episode. I can't remember. We can still talk about yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Ben got very impassioned about the glitches in the world. Started identifying people we know as glitches. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, I'm sorry. No, identifying people we know... As King Candies. Yeah. Saying yeah. that they would not hesitate to call us a glitch. Turn your phone off. I just did. It's an 800 number. What's... I get a lot of those. It's very annoying. Hold on one second. Let me pick this up. Hello? He actually picked it up. Ben, it's King Candy. <laughs> what? He said he wants me to tell you that you're a glitch. Unite the seven. No. Yeah. So King Candy is in this movie. Yes. King Candy is one of the seven. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, it wasn't it great in this movie when you, they united the seven. So when this movie, when they, the Justice League is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Uh, Aquaman, The Flash, Cyborg, and, and uh, Alfred. Bruce, yeah, Alfred. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alfred Bruce Wayne is the seven. <laughs> I don't know. Alfred is in the seven. I mean, he's he's involved. Kind of. Yeah. He's what, sitting on his honestly, desk. What's his power? The good keyboard. He's got one really good sweater. Have you noticed he's worn the same sweater? Yeah. Yeah. In both BVS. How much do you think uh, Jay Irons is pulling down? Here's a real question. There was someone I was trying to... Ugh, fuck, who is the person I was trying to wonder? Oh, how much did J.K. Simmons get for this movie? I don't know, a few hundred grand? He He's signs up for this. Winner. He signs up for this now, right after Whiplash. Yeah. Now, after he wins. Don't talk about him getting swole, though. Because he is out here denying that those pictures of him lifting... Yeah. Uh, were for Justice League. He said they were just basic he's, body He's like, I'm just keeping fit. I just want to be swole all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he saw Lady Killers, thought he looked really fat. And was like, ever since then, I want to be swole. I mean, good for you, JK. Yeah. He looks a little aggro in those pictures of him lifting, but, you yeah, know. JK, LOL. <laughs> but I I think, uh, no, I'm not going to talk about the swole thing. Sure, okay. But I do think, uh, th- this was one of his, like, first. Sure, his first gig. Uh, right, it's taken yeah. a while to come out. Yeah. And I, when I saw the opening of the movie, when the credits are starting, I was, like, astonished that he didn't get the end. Because there's no end in this movie. It's just with... No with. No, there was a with. I'm sorry, I could have sworn there was a I with. I believe there was nary a with nor an and. <laughs> and I will say here. You're probably. Joe Morton didn't get a with? No. He got. they At a certain point, it goes from single card billing to shared card billing. And then it's a couple groups of three. But no withs, no ands. Joe Morton, I think, was on a shared card of three. With Amber Heard. I'm making a grimacing face right now. Connie Nielsen got single card billing. She did. Yeah. I'll tell you the billing as I remember it because it's astonishing. I know the billing. Number one, Baffleck. Ben Affleck. Number two, Henry Cavill. What? But he is dead. How can he be in this movie? Seniority, baby. Superman is dead. He will be dead forever. Now, come on now. How is he? Spoilers. Number three, though. This is where it gets wild. Five time Academy Award nominee, Amy Adams. Amy Adams gets in right above Gal Gadot. Number four, Ezra Godot. Miller. No, no, no. Gal Gadot's number four. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Gadot, four. Yeah. Ezra Miller, number five. Six, Momoa. Correct. Seven, Fisher. Ray Fisher. Eight, Hines. Irons. Nine, Connie Nielsen. Diane Lane. I remember Connie Nielsen being weirdly high. I believe she's 10th. And okay. then I think it's Simmons. And then I think it's Hines. I don't think either of them got a with or an ant. <laughs> Maybe not. I remember not seeing with nor ands. No also's. No also's. No those. But <laughs> what if that Joe Morton? But Robin Wright. <laughs> Robin Wright was not in this. Right? She is in this. She's credited. Did you see her in the movie? She is in the battle scene for like half a second. It. They probably just put her face on someone or something. Bizarre. Bizarre. She probably got fifty grand. Good for her. Okay. Cool. Um. But yeah, it, it, no whiz, no ands. I was like, J.K. Simmons didn't get the and. That feels like a, a, a an iconic and part. A perfect and role is Commissioner Gordon. But he doesn't from do a, anything. He doesn't do in this anything movie. in this movie. No, no. and I and, think he got a mill. That's a lot. I think he got a mill, but I think he money. originally did more. So than this movie has a reported budget of three hundred million dollars, which made one of the most expensive films ever made. Uh huh. It's all on the screen. It's all on Steppenwolf. Where? Where on the screen is it? There's this scene where they just drive past like this big briefcase full of money. A pile of money. <laughs> I didn't see that. Well, here's – no, but David, here's the thing with this budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $300 million for one movie each. That's expensive. But it's actually kind of a bargain when you factor in that they shot this movie two and a yeah, half times. Yeah, they time. did shoot this movie a couple times. 300 for two and a half movies isn't terrible. <laughs> they got yeah. it right the second time. But <laughs> if if that's the case, then each movie was like 52 minutes long or whatever. No, I think they shot two and a half yeah. two hour movies. Yeah. Okay. I think they shot two and a half two hour thirty movies. So let's let's well let's let's just sort of I mean everyone knows or I think you know a lot of listeners probably know. Okay. BVS Dawn of Justice is announced. The title is clearly a nod to we're building out this universe. Because after Man of Steel, it wasn't clear if they were gonna try yeah, to do it. But Andrew then they were like, it. why don't we have Justice Dawn in this movie? They everyone was saying like, you know what, I'd love to see Justice just kind of crest the mountain mm. and Dawn. Mm-hmm. As they're uh, producing uh, BVS, yeah, 
Snyder starts releasing photos. Oh, here's a first look as Moa. Because they start Unite casting the seven. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they Ezra cast Miller. Momoa. And the hashtags on them. Unite the seven. Okay, clearly what they're ramping up here is they're going to do Justice League movie. Yeah. Cast all these actors. We don't know how large the roles are going to be in this movie. Godot, Miller, Fisher. Yeah. They're all, you, they're all there. Yeah, yeah, they're all there. We're uniting the seven. Uh, and then BVS comes out. Nod. People generally aren't crazy about it. Makes a lot of money. It makes a decent amount of money. It gets very bad reviews, uh, and it's um, it comes out. Was it uh, February or Mar- March? It comes of out in March. Uh, it's a March. Uh, yeah, com- <laughs> sure. <laughs> and um, right after it comes out, yeah, they're already shooting this movie. They start shooting this film, I think, within six weeks of yes. BVS being released. And so, uh, a lot of my friends or some of my pals, yeah, including for sure, I think, uh, past guest Mike Ryan. Okay, humble went, brag. Went to the set of this movie in yeah. London. And they all wrote their sort of set visit story. This was like a sort of thing where Snyder made it clear. Brighter. Uh, funnier, lighter. Yes, we're trying. To, we understand that people didn't love uh, just how oppressively dark Batman mm-hmm. or Superman was. So, yeah, like we've got jokes. They show them a reel that I think includes, that I think maybe was centered around the scene where Batman throws the batarang yes. at the flash and yes. he catches it and they have like banter. And so they were kind of like trying to be like, hey, 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 we know the narrative and we're trying to sort of uh, address it. And like you guys all criticize my movie and I wanted to look you in the face and like, you know, not be a jerk about it. And like I remember everyone coming back from that set visit not being like, oh, Justice League is going to be great. Yeah. But at least being like, well, they seem to at least know. They're listening. They're not like head in the ground. BVS was great. You know, like. Well, let's say the script was already had long been written, right? Chris Terrio, Academy Award winner, had written the script. The original plan, as they announced it, was they were going to shoot two Justice League movies back to back. Yeah. They were going to do it like Avengers 3 and 4, which talk about jumping the gun, right? right. And they were going to make them kind of two half movies. Yes. A sort of prelude movie with Steppenwolf that leads to Dark Side at the end of the first one. Correct. And the second one would be the big Dark Side movie. Right. At a certain Dark point. Dark Side's sort of the big, bad, the sort of Thanos esque. I mean, Thanos is a ripoff right. of him, in fact, like DC villain. He's at, like this sort of godlike yes. being. At yeah. a certain point, they go too much too fast. Let's ice the second one for a little bit. Right. Not rush into it. They never announced that. It just kind of dropped off the schedule. Right. Yeah. Because DC has had so many movies on and off the schedule. Yes. You know, they've been like, we're definitely doing Black Adam. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Before? No, after Shazam. No, before uh, Shazam. Uh, you yeah. know, so they have a lot of like untitled movies on the. Uh, yes. Um, but, uh, they have the script and they very quickly try to change the movie, but it's, it's, you know, not, uh, it's not putting lipstick on a pig, but it's trying to dress a, a pig up to look like a duck. It's just kind of the classic thing that they've done this whole time where they just seem to be making a movie, two movies too early every single time. And also really like writing the movie on their feet, like, like <laughs> coming, strategizing after they just, the big decisions have been made. Yeah. It's like with no sense of big picture planning yeah it's like they hand you a like bit of ham and they're like there's your sandwich one second because you're like oh it's not and they're like no no no, it's fine and they sort of slide a bread under it and like no right. it was always a sandwich you know right and you also go like but now i'm holding loose meat which is the antithesis of a sandwich i the whole reason a sandwich exists is i don't want to hold loose meat in my hands and they're like just fucking take the meat right now we'll bring you bread later we know you want bread we'll get the bread eventually uh yeah right. hold your horses <laughs> and now right it's more yeah they give you like uh, ham, and then the next time they're like, "No, no, we got plenty of bread." We and they bread. give you like a five bread sandwich. You're like, "This is too much bread." Like, no, they, no, 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 no. Then they take tape and they tape it together for you. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's great, it's great, it's great. <laughs> and then they take some out and they're like, "No, no, we got a ciabatta now." You know, like you know, we changed it. Would you like chipotle mayo? And you're like, "Yeah, eventually." But once I have the bread, I don't want to have Shut chipotle up. mayo Shut dripping up. on my hands. Well, then. I'll put it in your mouth. It's fine. <laughs> Wait, so the option is either I put the chipotle mayo in my mouth now, the sandwich has to meet it later, or I don't get it at all. Or, or no, or no, forget it. There won't be chipotle mayo. But 2018, there's okay. a whole mayo movie we're what? gonna do. Just all mayo. You'll but find the, out how they add the Chipotle. Yeah, right, right, right. But the sandwich will be done at that point. Fine, okay. You have I will some have here. the sandwich or the sandwich will have rotted. <laughs> oh, God. So, so they definitely shot this movie last year. Early last year. Right, exactly. Because they, they had like a it. lot of stuff to show at Comic-Con. 
they were shooting this film in like April of last year. Right. And they, yeah, they had a whole sizzle reel at Comic Con that yeah. was again very like funny. And wasn't just like, oh, here's the one scene we've shot. Like it was a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And that came out. They've had trailers for the last year plus. Yeah, they have. And then, you know, there were rumors swirling. Oh, they're going to do extensive reshoots. They're going to do extensive reshoots. This big bombshell story comes out this March or April. It was May 2017. Okay, so it's about a year after they started filming the movie. Uh, yeah, when they're in post-production. Yeah. Right. That Zack Snyder has stepped off of the movie. Yes. When the film is ostensibly done and just in post-production. That's what everyone had been led to believe. Right. Because his daughter had committed suicide. Yes. Which is had this terrible tragedy horrific. in his family. And, of course, his wife is his producing partner. Yes. And is, like, a key part of the whole Snyder thing. Right. She's in charge of those movies just, you know, with him. Right. And the thing so I never they're knew, stepping away. they have a lot of kids. They have a lot of kids. Some of them are adopted. And some, I think, are from a previous marriage. I believe uh, this daughter was marriage. from his previous marriage, I think. It, it anyway, doesn't really matter. they have a matter. very large family. He's very involved with his family. He, yeah, this terrible thing happened to him. So he steps away. Right. And in, Joss Whedon, who Joss had been, Whedon had already been hired for like a some sort of a Batgirl script movie. polish or something. Right. But yeah. oh, but also they brought yeah, him into right. the DC fold. They had, they had brought him, him in with this idea of he'll do a Batgirl movie. Yeah. Great pick. Uh, Have you been reading the new Batgirl comic? Uh, no, no. It's great. I mean, I like Batgirl. Batgirl of Burnside fucking rules. And there is a good movie to be made out of the most recent incarnation of Batgirl. Um, correct. That's my hot take. That's fine. I'm just not sure Whedon's the guy, but whatever. I agree with Whedon's that. making it, I guess. I mean, Maybe. who knows with DC? Who knows? So, but they, and then in July. Yes. And to be clear, right now it's November. Yes. When we're talking. Yeah. In July, they announced there's going to be two months of reshoots. July, August, September. <laughs> so that's uh, wild. Right. Because originally it was like, oh, he's going to do a little rewriting. Yeah. Maybe a little re-editing. Now, any movie like this is going to have... Maybe a week or two of reshoots. Exactly. Any movie like this, I think, standard with the contract, right. your actors will have like two weeks of reshoots built in. Yeah. And like a eight, $10 million budget maybe for reshoots. Yeah. This costs like 25 at least. Uh-huh. And that's like reported. Sure. And for the reshoots, it was two months worth. Yeah. And most importantly, Henry Cavill had a mustache. Okay. So let's talk because about Because he was shooting Mission Impossible 6, which yes. is not a Warner Brothers movie. No. And so Paramount they was like- They had him in first position. You cannot shave your mustache. But here's the other crazy aspect to that. He suddenly had a break in scheduling because Tom Cruise broke his ankle on Mission Impossible. Aha, uh-huh. sure, 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 sure. Paramount said, we're only going to be down for like six weeks. So he can't shave the mustache- because he won't have time to shoot all your stuff and grow it back. Right. And we need it for continuity. Yeah. And we're going to be back shooting in six weeks. Yeah. Mission Impossible has still not resumed filming. And it's coming out next summer? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Next July. I guess right. I have time. His recovery time has been longer than expected. He's I think old. Maybe, maybe they're just starting I- again now. They could have they could have shaved his mustache and it would have grown back in time. Right. But Paramount was... A jerk Bullish. about it, whatever. First that's, position, they had their right to do that. That's what they did. So, the final announcement is that the movie's coming out. It is a Zack Snyder film. He gets sole directing credit. Uh, Joss Whedon will get a writing credit with Chris Terrio. So, sure. you know, he that's his... I'm sure that Whedon, who has, throughout this process, been like, this is Zack's movie, not my movie. I'm just helping, yeah. you know. W- w- you know, made no fuss about trying to get a director's I'm sure. credit. I'm sure he had no interest in it. But but let's just state this, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of like writers gr- guild credits, the arbitration that usually goes sure. into who gets credits, and the yeah, WGA yeah, yeah. is crazy, and their rules are crazy. But a big thing they have is if you rewrite a script, in that you take the script and you rewrite every scene, you polish the dialogue, you tighten it up, you don't qualify for a credit on the movie. Even if you've affected every yeah, there, scene. There needs to be more of a substantial... Right. You have to create new stuff whole cloth. Right, right, right. So in order to get a co-writing on that credit, he needs to have created 40% of the script as it shows up on screen. Bam. Which means his rewrites, which are what he reshot, were at least that substantial. Right. Um, another thing I find very interesting is at a certain point, uh, memes started going around from the more recent trailers. Love a meme. Memes. 
Uh, Unite the memes. Meme. Who are your memes? Uh, I remember one time uh, Damon Wayne said he was going to do a jazz meme. Um, there was there were memes I saw going around where people did side by side photo comparisons of moments from the more recent trailers sure. and ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that seemed Whedon-y, Whedon esque, if you will. You know, had that that whatever dialogue. I'm kind pop. of shrugging. Right. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And compared it to the earlier trailers yeah, yeah, yeah. side by side and said. Look, the lighting styles look different because they're very different visual filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whedon's a lot more workmanlike. Uh, yes, put Snyder the camera in the right a place. Whole shoot it. visual motif that he loves. Very deliberate compositions and saturations yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and all of that. Right. I mean, this movie still felt more Zack Snyder to me, but yes, they were doing these side by side comparisons. Look how different from scenes that are shots that are sensibly in the same scene. Right. What's your point? I watched this movie. Yeah. And a lot of the things that we know for a fact, because we'll never know exactly no, what was shot by we him. will not. I mean, well, unless they come out and say. But a lot of things we know for a fact were shot by Snyder because they were in that first San sure. Diego yeah, reel. Yeah, yeah. Feels like it has been recolor timed. Yeah, no, for sure. They definitely, it looks less Snydery. It does. You can tell at certain points, like, that's a Snyder angle. That's a Snyder composition. Here's my hot take. Snyder stuff looks better. I agree. Yeah. But he's like, a better f- visual filmmaker. Unquestionably. Mm, I mean, he's, I think it's, I don't think he's a, I think it's just more like he has his thing. He has a thing. And this movie kind of lacks a thing. I don't think his thing is good. I tend to not like it, but at least it's a thing. It's a thing. Whereas this movie's kind of And he has immense control over his visual style. Whether or not you like that style, <laughs> aesthetically, it's not my favorite thing. No, it's terrible because I think Zack Snyder's big uh, decision for the finale was yeah. going to be like, it's all red. Yeah. And then Whedon was kind of like, red. Right. Yeah, exactly. He's like, it's red. And Whedon's like, it can be red. You yeah. know, like, it's just sort of like a little less red. There's another aspect to this, too. Talk about the movie not having a thing, which is a movie that is this reliant on CGI where you shoot all of it in green screens in July. Yeah, right. You're really rushed and the thing just kind of looks sloppy. Yeah. And I would find even within scenes, there would be like a look and then suddenly there's one. Like, you're going in coverage between Batman and Flash. Yeah. And then suddenly one of the shots looks really weird. And it's literally like they were like, oh, we can't put a new joke to add in. Yeah, you know. I mean, you have this more of an shot. eye for this than I do, honestly. I have an eye for this stuff. I also yeah. just don't remember this movie. I saw it like four days ago. It does kind of evaporate. It. it does. I just, like, I sat down to write my review and I was like, the fuck? I'll say this. I don't hate this movie. Oh, uh, okay. I guess so. Hate, I kind hate of, strong. I kind of shrugged at it. Mm, no, I know. No. No, I'm not that uh, forgiving. I went like, whatever. No, it's bad. I think it's bad. No, it's pretty bad. But I'll say this. Like, something like Suicide Squad or BVS, I'm sitting there and I'm pulling my hair out and I'm no, like, no, 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 no. aggravated. The, the, Batman vs. Superman is a way better movie than this movie. Way better. It is. It is. That movie has an idea. That movie has this whole has gothic dawn of the Ubermensch sort of like thing. insane idea. Yes. It has a wonderful opening sequence and then it has, you know, it's, it's very extra. <laughs> I sure. guess. This movie uh, sucks. It just kind of sucks. I'll say this. This movie is exactly what I thought Avengers was going to be. Right. But then Avengers was good. But I remember in the wind up to Avengers, I went, there's no way that's a fucking movie. A, all these Marvel movies, they've been pushing them all into this, like, very bland house style to make them all fit in with each other. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's going to backfire now. I don't think the characters have been built up well enough that it will be that exciting to see them all together. And I also just felt like it's going to feel like a fucking season finale of a TV show. It's just going to feel like mush. Mush. And then it ended up being and the trailer one of the more functional did. screenplays yeah. of, uh, in a blockbuster from last year. Well, and then, then, of course, that's probably what they're thinking when they're bringing Whedon on board, where it's right. like Whedon's good with the team. Yes. He's a teamy guy. He did a great job on a tough project of the Avengers. Right. Unite the Seven. It, Can we he do had it? to unite the seven. But do you remember, uh, have you ever heard like Dan Harmon's rant about doing punch up for DreamWorks animation? Yes, I have. Where they brought him in for Kung Fu Panda and they were like, so we've already started animating. Yeah. 80% of the movie has to be locked. Right. We have 20% of uh, money put aside to either, you can either pick 20% of the movie that you want to change whole cloth or you can change 20% of each scene. Right. So if Kung Fu Panda is like walking downstairs and he has a bucket, is there something funnier that could be in the bucket? That's the example he always throws out that they said <laughs> yeah, to him. Yeah, I vaguely remember. Is there that. something funny that could be in the bucket? And that feels like the position they put Whedon into. 
where it's like you can shoot like 20% nude scenes or like in this one scene, can you think of one funny joke to put in? Which is where that discrepancy in the visual style comes in that I saw where it's like, you know the the run that the uh, the Flash has about brunch? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Ezra Miller's hair looks totally no, no, different. No, that's obviously in that an addition. one shot. Because that where is... they were like, can you add in one more joke to this scene? that is in the scene that they were hyping from the beginning, right. the Batman meets right. uh, Flash scene. Yeah. And yeah, obviously, Whedon was just like, let's just dial this up a little more and... Let me add in one more joke. ...have this whole joke where he's in And brunch. then you look at that and he has... The haircut he has in Fantastic Beasts, which was filming the same time as this, Fantastic Beasts 2. That was the whole thing. They were, like, negotiating everyone's schedules. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it's like, well, yeah, I, I understand your logic of wanting to hire Whedon to do it, but you can't hire him after you finish shooting the movie. Uh, but that's what they did, and that's this what is they the movie did. we've got, and I think we should talk about the movie. Okay, so the movie opens with Henry Cavill's completely animated face. Yes, it does. Uh, that's the the cell phone scene. Right. I totally forgot about that. Very that's the opening. Odd. That's a Whedon idea, 100%. 100%. That's, but what are the kids doing? Uh, They're interviewing Superman for a podcast. Ooh. Is it for a podcast? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know if it was for a competition. Oh, the two kids? So we see him on screen. <laughs> I don't know. And he's talking, and his face looks like a Snapchat filter. Yeah, but they're getting away with it, I guess, because it's like, well, it's a cell phone camera. But already it looks weird, especially when he smiles. I kind of like that, though. I mean, not not how he looks. He looks weird. I mean, I just liked their little the little cell phone scene. Oh, thing. I like the old, I it was kind of well and well acted. Yeah, uh, um, I just like where he's like, it's like it should be like a river, you know, like he's trying to yeah. explain the meaning of his uh, emblem. But you know how when you like use a Snapchat filter. It tries to keep up with your face, but it's yeah, like right, a right, second right, behind right, in lag right, time. Right, yeah. The physics aren't like totally right because like. The dimensions of your face might be different than, God forbid, Bob Marley's face, you know? Yeah. This feels like that where it's like your mouth moves differently if you have a mustache. So even if you paint the mustache out, his upper lip is behaving differently. Right. Uh, it looks weird, and I turn to Jerome Milligan, and I just go like, fuck, this is going to be a problem. And he just went, this is going to be rough. It's Like immediately the mustache thing is jarring. And this is already when it's like filtered through cell phone video footage. Yeah. So then the movie starts, and uh, I got kind of excited by this for first Batman scene. What's the first Batman scene? It's Holt McElhaney yeah. on a rooftop as some petty criminal <laughs> trying to run away. Yeah, he's playing the great uh, DC character Cube Man. Yes. Because Holt, Ma- Holt McElhaney is a cube. He's a, a cube on a cube. Yep. Cube on a cube. Series of cubes. Have we, we did this rant I think we on did. pod? For, we definitely uh, had this rant. Uh, Jack Reacher. Oh, yeah. Never go back. <sighs> Holt. And now he's mind hunting. Now he's mind hunting. And uh, he's monster trucking. Well, <laughs> he smokes so much in Mindhunter. Every scene he's in, he's smoking a cigarette. It's the 70s, baby. They smoked. Yeah. Does he smoke like a cube cigarette? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so he hunts, Batman like hunts Holt McElhaney. But it's kind of, uh, it felt very Batman the Animated Series to me. It felt very heightened and very stylized without being overly dark. It felt kind of light and fun, but you have the super gothic Gotham architecture, which is nice to see after like being in a Nolan verse where everything's really grounded. Yeah. Even BVS has like a pretty grounded view of Gotham. Yeah. His stylization comes from how he makes his images, not necessarily the art direction of the city, you know? And this was like a lot of browns, and he's like climbing on the walls. And I was like, this is kind of fun. I like the way Batman's moving. I like that he's chasing a criminal over the side of the building. Maybe this will just be goofy fun. Like maybe this movie will be dumb. But it will be like goofy and comic booky, and I won't give a shit. Right. And then it goes to like I'm just I'm just waiting for you to get to what then happens. I can't even remember what the next scene after this is. Is it maybe Lois Lane? No, they well, go to her pretty fast. No, wait, finish the scene. Oh, oh, he so- captures Holt McElhaney to use his fear to lure a parademon. Correct. He then like splats the parademon or he catches it with a net, but then the parademon explodes. He catches himself on fire. He explodes. And leaves behind an imprint of three cubes. None of this makes any fucking sense. Hashtag the three cubes. Hashtag the three cubes. It's a proprietary Martha advantage. Box. Here's what really pisses me off. Yeah. Here's what Batman does after that. Leaves. He leaves. He doesn't capture Holt McElhaney the criminal. 
And he goes to Alfred and he's like, what do you think's going on with the symbol? We keep on seeing the symbol. Or he's talking to him over know, intercom. Maybe take the bank robber or whatever the fuck Holt Mac- McElhaney is. Right. Take him to jail. Right. You're Batman. But Alfred says, hashtag unite the boxes. <sighs> and the movie keeps on trucking. Uh, I think then we go to Lois Lane and she's uh, grieving. Yeah, I think you have the Lois Lane scene where it's like, She's not ready to write a Pulitzer Prize winning yes. article yet. What's she doing? She's kind of just – she's sad. You see the the bank foreclosing on the the Kent house. You see a lot of Diane Lane and, and oh, Amy man. Adams. This is all. Two Academy Award nominated actresses. Two, yeah. two of our finest two great living actresses. screen actresses. Okay, sure. Yeah. Amy Adams is like top of the – Amy the Adams is, a, is, is killing it. Diane Lane uh, I think is I really love Diane solid. Lane. Yeah. yeah, love Diane Lane. Yeah. Yeah, they whatever. They, they they they're in this movie almost feels ridiculous, but whatever. Third they're belt. in it. Yeah, sure. Um and, and then I I think pretty early on, oh, I think when Batman's on the rooftop, he still says like he says to Alfred like or Alfred's like what do you want to do next and he's like I think it's time we unite the team. Yeah, pretty much. Right. And then you see Alfred like pull to up the clear, headshots. To be clear, this movie is 118 minutes long. It like trucks. it's it's uh it's short. This movie moves. Uh I guess so. <laughs> kind of just walks, I think. Yeah. It's more like it just doesn't walk very far. I'd say this moves, but this movie moves in the way that like a kid riding a tricycle down like the aisles of a Walmart moves. <laughs> where it's like with no regard for anything around <laughs> it and with no end goal of where to arrive. Because the idea is, I guess, just Superman died. Yes. Bruce feels bad about that because it's like 80% his fault. We've had two movies now where America cannot get over their grief at the loss of Superman, even though the two movies before that were about how much of a dick Superman was and how he hated him. Whatever, they're mad about it. Like, Superman was Edward Snowden for two movies, and now we're treating him like he's JFK. Meanwhile, Wonder Woman is busy at her job dusting a giant statue. <laughs> She's dusting. That first Wonder Woman action scene's kind of cool. Well, so that, to me, is uh, uh, probably an added... Uh, sequence feels like they need to be for up because it yeah. looks different yes and it also just exactly it, it has no relevance to anything no you think it's gonna like this will be some parademon stooge right she stops uh, a heist Bolton. yeah but no it's just like she just stops a heist does like four wonder woman things you know box some bullets yeah, but and then skids around. But wasn't she supposed to since World War One not been active? So the, right, the idea is now she's fucked. back. No, 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 because she showed up to fight Doomsday. Right. So now she's a little bit back in the public eye. And then in Wonder Woman, I can't believe you guys don't remember the wonderful epilogue and prologue of Wonder Woman where she answers her emails. Okay, but she leaps out. Right. I and remember. That's her going to do deal with this specifically. Eh, I don't know why not. So the idea is that. She lay dormant, boarded a plane, saw on the plane satellite TV that was airing before the plane took off that Doomsday was attacking. Yeah. Rejoined the the workforce, right? right? Yeah. Uh, and then after that, went back to her little office, decided I'm not going to be a superhero again until she got the briefcase from Bruce Wayne, which then made her decide to permanently become a superhero again. Right. I guess. Right. Ben? Yeah. You're saying correct? Yes. That's okay. what he's saying. Anyway, so that happens. And then we get Miles Dyson. I, I might be fucking up this order, but who gives a shit? Uh, sure. Miles Dyson from Terminator 2. Right. And he goes. Uh, he swore to never work for Skynet again, but clearly he went back on his promise. Yeah. No, he's working for Star Labs, I guess. Yeah. You got your Star Labs. Star Labs Industries. And uh, he, he hung up that endo arm for uh, an endo body? Yeah, I don't know. We saw it. I Do guess. You want that, me to put a record scratch in for that? Yeah, I saw this movie twelve hours. <laughs> I mean, in Batman versus Superman, we saw this clip of him playing with a mother box, right? Cell phone footage, and it kind of makes a cyborg out of his son. Yes, who had died? Who had either died or been all American football wounded. star? Right, was near death. Played well, by they, Ray Fisher, say- who is a total unknown. Uh, and is pretty good. I liked him a lot. Yeah, this, uh, he's say. pretty charismatic for considering his whole arc in this movie is I want to die. Uh, he did that play where he got spotted. I think it was the the Ali Frazier play. Yes, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Um, and off of that, everyone was like, "This guy might be a movie star." And Warren Brothers signed him to like a five picture deal. He had never been in a movie before. Good for him. Um, Cyborg. Not historically a member of the Justice League. No, but more recently, correct. Right. He was yes. a Teen Titan. 
Yes. That was his prominent role, and he sort of became the elder statesman of the Teen Titans. He was like the big brother figure. Mm -hmm. And in some of the, I I don't know, two of the three most recent DC Universe reboots, they sort of elevated him to be A-list Justice League status. Oh, yeah. Right. Because uh, Jon Stewart... Yeah, who had been the sort of diversity hire within the Justice League. It's sad but true. I mean, DC always sort of makes that, right? uh, Yeah. Um, Had stepped down because they wanted to bring back to life Hal Jordan, who had been dead for a long time. DC's sort of most classic. So then Cyborg got promoted to the big leagues. Yeah. Um, But he's always sort of been shoehorned in there because he doesn't sort of have the same stature as those guys. He works better as a younger character. The whole cyborg thing works better as sort of a metaphor for teen angst development, you know? Sure. Um, so, it, like, that was the character when they announced, like, we're going to make a cyborg movie. It was met with a lot of derision. Yeah. Ben and I have been making cyborg jokes for, like, the last two years. Sure. But from the moment this guy came on screen, I was like, I like this guy. This guy is fine. He's an honest, natural performer with a lot of gravitas. Considering he's wearing a fucking body stocking practice, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, first of all, he's got a great voice. Yeah. He sounds like a fucking superhero. Sure. But I also think this is a thing I really like in actors when I feel like they're not showing everything they got. They don't need the, they don't feel the need to put it all on the table. They're holding something back. And he could have gone real big with this, like, I was dead. I'm a monster. Right, right, (laughs) truly, right? And I feel like he's pretty pulled back in this, which I liked a lot. Mm -hmm. And the opening chunks of the movie when he's in his sort of disguise, when he's wearing his sweatpants over it, and you're just seeing the red glowing through, I was like really into him in all these scenes. When he takes the sweatpants off and then he's just CGI goop man, it becomes very hard to discern a performance there. He's not very interesting. His face looks like it's floating. As like an an action hero, he's not very interesting. Cyborg's never that interesting. He's a cyborg. Who gives a shit? Yeah, it's kind of 1992. Right. Where they're like, ooh, a cyborg. But he's a robot? He's a cybernetic organism. Right. Yeah. Also, in like the comics and the cartoons, and that's the other thing. Cyborg's very popular now because Teen Titans Go is very popular. But that Mm. character is very fun. He's avuncular. He's kind of like Aquaman. Yeah, I haven't this. watched that. I assume that's one of the animated yes. shows that where it's like those are actually really good. Yes. And everyone's like, DC should really think about like it's TV and it's animation yes. like when trying to come up with uh, its movies. They've and done I, two good Teen Titan cartoon shows. Yeah. Uh, in both of them, Cyborg's like the big brother character. He's kind of the fun loving guy. Um, he's sort of worked through his, his pain at his whole Frankenstein complex. But also he is a cyborg. He is part man part machine like he has a lot of exposed flesh he still has human bits do we have to talk anymore about cyborg in this the only part of him that's human is like a fan yeah, of the opera mask one, uh, yeah exactly exactly it's one third of a face right otherwise he's a hundred percent rubbit mm-hmm. um this movie is like top to bottom full of flubber flubber as we defined it you guys who haven't listened back in our to revenge of the Sith episode, episode where it's just like weightless cgi gook that's exactly. just like bouncing around exactly. as brightly colored and feels like it has no substance no weight no impact right and like from the way his body moves yeah to like the composition or the compositing and all these things that feel kind of reshot in a green screen that they have to insert into like a lot of scenes start with a a master shot a wide shot a group shot in a real set that feels real and then the second they cut into coverage, it's like this was shot a year and a half later. The action green is screen. so bad in this movie. The movement a lot of times looks like someone's clicking and dragging it with a mouse. Right. And that gets to the video game cutscenes in this movie starring the world's greatest supervillain, Steppenwolf. Darkseid's uncle, mm-hmm. Steppenwolf. Mm-hmm. The, the threat so large you must unite the seven, right. Steppenwolf. And he yes. looks like he's straight out of injustice to gods among us right <laughs> every one of these scenes just looks like so this is why the movie is just putrid in my opinion uh-huh because uh there's absolutely no stakes whatsoever to this no. movie the only stake in this movie is will the justice league yeah come together sure. it's not will they come, come together? together right now remember when they used that in the trailer but it was in like the movie cool, too brutal- it's in the credits yeah, yeah. It's Junkie XL. Dun, 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 dun. Um, it's not will they come together to defeat this great crisis. Yeah. No. Steppenwolf is like immediately obviously like no big deal. He just wants to put three boxes together. And in the comics, the mother boxes are like very powerful, but they're not the infinity stones. It's not like if you put the three together, the world will end. It's just like 
This is a fucking thing. This is That's what's a- so maddening about this movie. It's like they did it's everything. It's so macguffin it be. Yeah. I, it feels almost mean to c- compare to Marvel, but it's like they did all the That's Marvel the shit and they kind of just did a slightly worse yeah. job. Like, ding dong. Infinity Stones, Mother Boxes. Ding dong. Who's at the door? Ben, will you get the, oh, yeah. the door quickly? Uh, hi, what's up? Uh, hello, is uh, David here? Yeah, it's uh, me. Did, Sims? did you expect someone? Uh, I, maybe. I don't know. Okay, guys, I'm going to go to the bathroom while whatever's about to happen plays out. David. David, it's me. It's me, Detective Dormer from Christopher Nolan's Insomnia. <laughs> sure. Pacino himself. No, Detective Dormer. Uh, Will Dormer. Pile of garbage. Yeah. Roger, Roger. <laughs> Uh huh. David, I need your help. Uh, I, I okay. I can't sleep. I got insomnia. It's 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 uh it's tough to sleep sometimes, especially I mean, when it's light out there. Hotel room, and they gave me a bag of rocks. Uh, <laughs> put your alarm clock in the drawer. I did it. Okay, okay. I still not sleeping well. Duct tape pillows to the window, David. Uh, okay. I cannot sleep. Well, what do you think about if you could get like a new mattress delivered? That's sort of like in a box, like the size of a mini fridge. What? It like like a really small, like how did they fit it in there? Kind of size. Did you box. read my mind? They'll and and you're you're in uh, Night Mute, Alaska. Correct. Yeah, so it's in the. It's They'll in the, ship it to the hotel, of course. But David, David, I can't believe you predicted that because I was going to say the biggest conflict I have right now. Oh my the God. reason they're giving me a bag of rocks to sleep on is the door to my hotel room is the size of a mini fridge. <laughs> All that can get in or out is a mini fridge. I gotta kneel. I gotta walk on my knees. You're telling me this box is the size of a mini fridge? We're gonna have to pay them, Ben. I'm kidding. No, this is good. Yeah. David, what is this company? Uh, we're talking about Casper. What? Like the ghost? I'm scared. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm no, frightened. Uh, Casper's a sleep brand. Oh, okay. Now uh, they've created this amazingly comfortable mattress. Oh, fears quelled. That. Uh, you you don't have to like go to the store. You don't have to like get some complicated you know truck delivery setup. Or Mayor Tierney can sign for it at the front there's desk. There's no like salesman who's trying to get a commission out of you to like you know sell the right mattress to you and like inflate the prices or up upsell you. Uh, it's just in house developed mattress, radical sleek de- sleek design, and it comes in a tiny little box. Oh, like a like a how did they do that size box? How do they do that? Look, David, I got to be honest with you. Okay, Will. Something's been keeping sorry, me up. Sorry, I'm night. sorry. Detective Dormer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, respect the title. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to a member of the LAPD. Look, I'm a guilt-ridden man. Mm-hmm. I got demons. I can't sleep at night. Yes. And here's the thing that haunts me every night. Much like Casper the Ghost haunts me. As well? Yes. Yeah. A thing that haunts me is that the mattress industry has forced consumers into paying notoriously high markups. Yeah. It scares me down to my bones. I, instead of going to a showroom and having to deal with the salesman, Casper's just revolutionized it, and you just can get a mattress straight. Like you know, you tell the me they're passing those savings directly to the consumer. Yeah, and it's got a mattress that was developed by an in-house team of engineers. It's got supportive memory foam. Supportive the sleep surface. You can just got the right sink and right bounce. Bounce, baby. <laughs> it's got the right bounce, baby, and it's got a breathable design, so it's not hot. Because remember how, like, back in the day, yeah. the foamy mattresses, they were hot? Oh, too hot. Not hot anymore. Look, I got one. You got one? Yeah. And I think it's been it's been great. It's got the right firmness. It's got the right bounce. It's not hot. It's uh, breathable. Not like when I was in The Devil's Advocate. And if I don't like it... Too I hot. Can, I, <laughs> yeah, that was too hot. I was Satan. <laughs> uh, no, wait, you're Will Dormer, to be clear. Yes. <laughs> No, and it's if you don't like it, you have a hundred days. What home trial, and you can return it any time. They'll come pick it up. They'll refund you everything. Now, David, I'm in Night Mute, Alaska, right now. But my next case might take me to Canada. Can I get it shipped there? Uh, yeah, we've got free shipping and returns anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. What? Yep, it's an affordable okay. price. They sell directly to consumers. They got twenty thousand reviews, average of four point eight stars. What? That's about what Insomnia got upon its release. I, that's I would say Insomnia had about four point eight stars because you yeah. had Pacino, Robin Williams, Hilary Swank, Maura Tierney, Paul Dooley. You know, he's the point eight. 
I'm interested though in, <laughs> He's in that, right? Is there yeah. is there like some kind of special deal or something that we're we're offering to to, to Detective Dormer potentially? So or our, our fans listening to this yeah, episode. Look, I don't currently? order stuff unless I got a unique URL and a promo code. So listen up. If you go to casper.com slash check. Oh, good. Unique URL. And you use the promo code check. So you got to check to make sure that you type check into yeah, the promo type box. in check in that promo code. Double you can check. Get 50, as for a special offer, you can get $50 off a mattress. This is only applicable to the purchase of a mattress, and terms and conditions do apply. But casper.com slash check, promo code check. Get yourself a mattress, 50 bucks off. My friend, the devil's advocate, I misspoke earlier and implied that was the same person that I was, but it was just a friend of mine, a cousin who looks very similar. He would be very adamant about the fact that terms and conditions apply. Would he be adamant about the fact that these things are made and developed and assembled in the USA? Oh, that's what I like because I'm a jingoist. (laughs) All right. Uh, And uh, would he like the fact that you can just try it out? What? Test your performance. Okay. And if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. What? You can, you can just send it back. They'll come for, get it for you. A refund? Yeah. Oh, hey, Griff. Yeah? Hey, what's up? Uh, we just went on this whole long thing about caster mattresses uh, oh. with oh. Detective Dormer here. I'm this sorry. Is, I know uh, I promised that I was going to do the ad read. I'm sorry that I went out to the bathroom. I'm so tired. Let me sleep. Let me sleep. Yes. Why are you saying my line? Let me sleep. All right. Uh, I guess it's okay if he sleeps in the corner. Okay. Um, Detective Will Dormer sleeping in the corner. Uh, good night, Dormer. So, Casper, uh, we got it all, right? We, oh, we, Dormer's we, bleeding Cas- heavily. Have you noticed this? Oh, Look, yeah. Let him sleep. Okay. Ca- let, him let him go to Casper.com slash check, put in promo code check, and okay. let him sleep. He's so tired. Term- terms and conditions apply. He's a tie tie boy. He is a tie tie boy. Um, so, anyway, Justice League. Yeah, Stephen Wolf, our greatest villain, played by Kieran Hines, an actor. We talked we about like many times we on talk, this podcast. We talked about a lot. He was in Munich. He was trying to think in of other movies. The Weight of Water. <laughs> yes, he was. He was on the USA original series Political Animals. With one Will Griffin Dormer. Griffin Newman. <laughs> uh-huh. The characters were not welcome because it got the lowest ratings of any USA show in 10 years. <laughs> really? It really did. I remember being on set with uh, Academy Award nominee Dan Futterman. Who was on that show uh, for, for screenwriting? Yes, twice, twice nominated, I believe, for Foxcatcher and Capote. He got a Foxcatcher now. I think he did. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Let me look it up. Emax Fry and Dan Futterman shared credit on that film. Yes, they did. Uh, did he get the nom? Was he nom? Yes, Hell. original screenplay. Hell's Can you yeah. name the five nominations that film got? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, best actor Steve Carell. Crazy. Best supporting actor Mark Ruffalo. True. Best director, Bennett Miller. The craziest one. Because it did not get get nominated for Best Picture, Picture, despite there being nine nominees. Correct. And the other nomination would have been, I've gotten four out of five. Uh, You got four out of five. Editing? No. Cinematography? No. Think. Think about what Foxcatcher had. A lot of. Wrestling. True. Makeup. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Had a lot of nose. (laughs) Uh, um, yeah, that's the fifth. All okay. right. Uh, Unite Kieran the five. Hines. Kieran Hines, who's a nice guy and... Very good actor. I'm sure he had a great time collecting a check and doing some voiceover. Ran his voice through five filters. Does like, not feel like he mo this performance because it feels very physically unfocused. Really? It doesn't feel like the, anyone mo this. You never know because I know like they just do so much mo these days, but there's nothing... In this guy's design, in no. his face. It feels like a video game cutscene, right? When he's in these scenes, like, collecting the mother boxes, it just feels like CGI goop. Well, also, he's... Yeah, so what is Steppenwolf? Okay, he has... A general. Someone pointed out all the DC Universe villains have been generals. Uh-huh. Which kind of says something weird. Uh, like, it's yeah. like Zod, Danny Houston. True. Ares is, like, the general Ares. of the war. Yeah, right. you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's always these, like... Suicide Squad, That's it's not, though. It's Enchantress. Oh, right. Enchantress. General Enchantress. Uh, four out of five. Yeah. Feature general. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then Doomsday is is just uh, mutated uh, General Zod in BVS. Good point. Uh, it's, it's a very militant uh, cinematic universe they're developing. Um, he is a general. He is Darkseid's uncle. 
But do they say that in the movie that he's Dark Side's no, uncle? Don't. That's that's his comic book origin. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the he's one of Kirby's uh, new gods. Yes. 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 Uh, which they kind of they they say new god a lot in this movie. I guess so. And he mentions Dark Side once. Yes. I believe sort of in passing. But that's sort of the whole idea is that the Amazons are the old gods. He's trying to get rid of the old gods. He wants to rise to the level of new gods. It seems like he wants a promotion. He thinks uniting the boxes will. But we do get so. we get this flashback i'm trying to remember if it's it doesn't fucking matter who cares so there's this flashback yeah of like the last time steppenwolf tried some shit and, he and killed it was everybody. like many ages ago pulled the ring off a lantern and but but it was like he uh tried to unite the three mother boxes and so the the worlds of men yes amazon and atlantis, atlantis united to stop him they did it we get this whole like cgi lord of the Rings shit they each took a box there's a green lantern there a martha box they each take a martha box and they like put it away so it's like the atlanteans put it in their atlantis bank and yes. the amazons put it in some sort of like an amazon pyramid yes and the humans bury it in a hole yes yes uh so it's very Lord of the Rings. It's very Lord. It's it's like the Sauron opening. It really is like down yes. to the sort of like three realms uniting and like the humans. It's kind of like humans couldn't be trusted to actually deal with this because yes. one of them would just try to use it. So we just buried it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I guess I have this thing that the Atlanteans and the Amazonians have a, have a weird uneasy alliance. But like they fuck fought that. The they, they don't whatever. talk about yeah. it. They, it's not so. Okay, sometime around now, now, now Batman, Bartman, I'm sorry, Bartman is actively trying to unite the seven. He's going about... And he goes to see Wonder Woman, and she's kind of like, it's happening. The mother boxes are waking up. Yeah, it's too late. It's already too late. It's just that he's going to bring war, and she says war is already here. Well, they did my favorite thing in superhero movies because Wonder Woman finds out that it's going down because they shoot the arrow... Yes, at I this like point, that. Steppenwolf has already stolen the boxes. Right. And they say, the humans will not know what this means. And th- then Connie Nielsen says, but she will. But no, I just love when they have newscasts yes. they in like the superhero thing. movies. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. it just like totally doesn't look real at all. No. Yes. It's so ridiculous. I always love it's to like see who ro- they got. It's though. like RoboCop It's like RoboCop. Level. Like yeah, yeah, ridiculousness. Yeah, yeah. It's like RoboCop. Uh, RoboCop, which we'll never talk about. Uh, Cyborg. Cyborg's kind of a RoboCop when you think about it. I know. And here's the thing. I sa- I was saying this to Jira. Made me wish they made a physical suit for him because I think he moves too easily because yeah, but, he's CGI good. Yeah, but this is this is the like sickness of modern filmmaking. I know. Like this is they'll never do it because they're like, fuck that. That's complicated. And I'll talk about it here because we're never going to talk about it on a future episode. But one of the beauties of RoboCop is you see how pained he is in every movement. How uneasy that suit is for him. Yeah. How you know? long ago did that movie come out? Like 30 years ago. 30 years, 30 years ago. ago. 30 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It came out July. Yeah. 1987. So. So we. So le- I, I don't remember the sh- order, but here are well, the series. Basically. The thing that happened, he, go- he goes to Wonder Woman. They form their uneasy alliance, right? But, but then we have this scene where Steppenwolf attacks the Amazon. Yes. And there's a whole big scene where he kills like a ton of them. Uh huh. Uh, he sort of beams down from like a spaceship that we don't see. He Apparently sort of, Robin Wright's in it. I guess so. No, no. She's in the flashback scene. She's in the flashback war because oh, that's right, when she would right. have been alive. She's dead now. That was Bray's big question is who's teleporting him? We don't know. We don't see it. We don't see the ship he goes to. Because that feels like something where third act was supposed to go. Ha ha. Dark side. Yeah, but instead like, it just seems it. like he's got teleportation powers. Maybe. Who cares? Doesn't, I don't know. Doesn't come up. Don't know. He just attacks with he his parademons. He gets the mother box. He kills a bunch of Amazons. But then like more Amazons, like the whole army sort of comes and he's like, all right, I'll see you later. Which also looks very Lord of the Rings. No, it looks shit. It looks like shit. It looks Lord, Lord of, the- of the shit. Yeah, okay. Fine. Shit of the rings. Can I just, because I don't remember what order these scenes happen because they're just fucking jumbled up in like a, a, a Doritos mix bag. But uh, just the couple of things. It's a bag of munchies, right? Yeah. A couple of things yeah. that happen. We see the Flash. Yeah, we've seen the f- socially awkward boy. His dad's in jail for I guess the murder of his mother, which really he was falsely accused up. of. Yes, you know, good old casting. Z- old Zack Snyder collaborator, you know. Yes, but Crudup and, and Miller, I think, is pretty good father son. Sure, it seems to work for me. Yeah, um, and he's going to visit his dad at jail, talking about trying to figure out the case. And his dad's like, "You got to move. Gotta on. Forget you gotta it. Move you just got to live your life." Right. We see uh, Arthur Curry 
uh, aka Aquaman. Batman visits him first in like a fishing town. Yeah, in like Iceland or and something. And he's like, I hear there's a guy who comes up to land and gives you fish. And they're like, Fuck you, rich guy. And like no one's coming in a boat in years, and because he isn't coming on a boat. And then he looks at the painting on the wall and it looks but like Jason Momoa. Arthur is in this scene the whole time. He's translating the guy. He's just there and right. then finally Bruce Wayne's like, you're the Aquaman. I hear you talk to fish. And he's like, Ugh. my man. My man, fuck you. Yeah. And he leaves. Right. Because uh, he comes back Is later. this the part where he takes the bottle of whiskey? Yeah, probably. And then drinks some of it, throws it on the ground, takes off his shirt, he's, he's in like, his slacks. He's on his tab. Right. And then he like, Batman chases him out, Bartman, I'm sorry, chases him out to the water and he's half in the water in a scene that feels totally reshot because they look really green screened mm-hmm. in front of these like whatever it's supposed to be, Icelandic landscapes. Sure. And they have this conversation where he's like, strong man, stronger alone. It's like, That's not the same. That's the opposite of the same, which feels very weed Yeah, it does. And, and it, it's just not working because it's not part of the movie's tone. Right. It just sort of like will slip into sort of jokier tone. Refusal sometime. to call. But but who here, cares? But here's another thing. With, and at the same time, yeah. Cyborg is refusing the call because Wonder Woman approaches him and he's like, I'm a freak. I'm a monster. He's in his apartment. He's like, I keep getting firmware updates. I can't exactly. leave. <laughs> He's upset that he keeps on getting new iOS updates. All true. Yes. Um, so those are like the basic introductions for all these characters. None of them want to join. Um, what was the thing I was going to say? The thing I kept on thinking about watching this movie was like the way the DC Universe is going about constructing these characters and their mythologies. Um, Wonder Woman, they were able to undo this because the movie's a prequel, right? Yes. But it feels like they're dropping us in on the fifth date. Okay. In that, like, your first date with someone has, like, all this charge to it, you know? This is the fifth movie. Right. But I'm saying you have all this charge and you're meeting each other and you're finding the connection points and you're building that relationship to want to keep on seeing this person. Yeah. By the time you get to the fifth date, it's less electrifying. Right. Because you've settled into something and hopefully it's become something more sustainable. Yeah, but... But you need that first date to, like, get you interested. Do you know what I'm saying? But the first date was this movie about, like, General Zod. That's my point. Yeah. My point is the entire way they've gone about all of this, they skip the first date and they just assume you like all these characters. Well, yeah, and like, look, it's it's hard to do Batman over and over again, right? I get it. You know, I get why you'd want to do shortcuts sometimes. Well, but here's a key distinction for me. I'm totally fine with them being like, here's Batman. We're not doing origin story. We're setting him up. He's been in the universe for a long time. You still have to find a way to make me like this Batman. It no, doesn't mean you have to start at the beginning no, with every grumpy. character. No, he's a grump. Most movies don't start with the character being born yeah. or getting their job for the first time. You know? Yeah. Most movies deal with the character at this phase in their life. But you have to, like, wine and dine me a little bit to get me on board with these characters. And these movies don't do that. They just assume, oh, you like Aquaman, right? You're excited that Aquaman's finally in a movie. My man. He is my man. Uh, but here's the thing. It's a fifth date movie. That's that's a fine read. But, they but never here's given the thing. Us the first thing. Like Ezra Miller is pretty cute as the Flash. Yeah. I kind of liked him. I could see well, enjoying an Ezra Miller Flash movie. I'm biased. He's an old friend of mine. Yeah. I like him a lot in How this. How are you guys doing? I, I'm, Horny uh, Rob? Horny Rob. Yeah. We also, I was a summer camp counselor. Do you know that? I think I did. Yes, we yes. were like the John Wade and John Ford of uh, summer camp sketch comedy. So how's he doing? He seems to be doing well. I haven't talked to him in a, a little bit. He's been yeah. busy. He's been shooting a movie for four years. I'd love to have him on the podcast and ask him about all this bullshit. I would too. I wouldn't phrase it to him that way. Uh, and he's but, but I, I, going to be in a movie, but they don't have a director, so who knows when? And it was that's originally a Flash out. movie, but now it's a Flash Point movie. Now it's called Flash Point, which is a whole different storyline where they sort of reset the universe, which makes people think they're going to use that to sort of recast to other cast members. Maybe, but I mean, to me, it seems like because everyone's like, are, is, there's a lot of rumors today, in fact, on the internet that yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal is going to play the Bartman ready to play Bartman in the Matt Reeves Bartman movie which in which be, he will do the Bartman yes and I, people are like are they just going to have him play Bruce Wayne will he play someone else or you know like yeah. will he just be the Ben Affleck character yeah. new casting and to me it's like what do you mean like you've already set up that Bruce Wayne in these movies is kind of old yeah. and over it yeah have him retire yeah like fuck it i think that's the coolest then thing you can they could even do. have ben affleck you know right. come in if you need him to come in yeah i think I that's know, exactly what they shit. should do and he should play jason todd or something yeah play no jason todd's dead in this uh universe well, what i'm saying is play they Dick could, Grayson, they could do a, they could make fucking red hood part of some other movie and allows them to pass the torch and yeah. then jason todd reveals damian or, wayne i don't give a shit what you do yeah. like just have that's fine like don't just do where he's like 
I'm Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But younger. Yeah. Like, don't do that. I think that would be uh, fucked. Um, uh, I used to, uh, Ezra and I used to be on the improv team together. Mm -hmm. And so I did comedy with Ezra. That's what I knew him from doing. And Mm -hmm. he has been cast a lot playing like brooding intense types. Yeah. Which he's very good at. But I'm always very excited when I get to say him be lighter and do comedy. So this felt to me, this character is closest to like Perks of Being a Wallflower of the stuff he's done, which I still think is his best performance far and away. I guess so. Um, Not a fan of that movie. I think he's phenomenal in that movie. He's good. Um, I think and, I think Kevin, I guess, is my favorite performance of his. I think he's really yeah. good at playing very avuncular misfits. He was the Gonzo. He was the Gonzo, and we bore him. <laughs> I was going to say I like Ezra, uh, and I think I would enjoy a Flash movie. Mm-hmm. I like Jason, and I think I could enjoy an Aquaman movie, although the Aquaman-specific scene in this film is one of the dodgiest. He goes down to Atlantis. We should actually get to that because that's right around now. He sees Amber Heard who plays Mira. Uh, They've set him up as, oh, he spends half his time in the water, half his time in this bar. But Amber Heard seems to be like, hey, what's up? Where Haven't heard have from you, you in a while. And you're like... "The Where were you going underwater? To the, the fish suburbs? You weren't going home? No one's seen you? This scene is completely incomprehensible it's nonsense and here's another thing that happens because draw and i were talking before the movie and we were like how are they going to do a whole fucking aquaman movie like how are they going to do all the underwater stuff how are they going to have dialogue scenes this movie has like just him kind of floating around clearly in front of a green screen it doesn't really look weightless right it doesn't really look like swimming and it's like they put a water filter in front of it yeah and then when he lands on this pedestal Mara makes like a bubble, like a cone of silence from Get Smart. Yes. And then they have their dialogue in an air bubble. And it's like, Why? is that how fucking every dialogue scene in the Aquaman movie is going to go? I don't Are know. Are they going to have to make an air bubble every time they want to talk? Probably not. Because my guess is there will be some sort of Atlantean cities yeah. that have air bubbles built in. It'll be like um, Gunga. Odo Gunga. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, <laughs> I like James Wan. I just Wan. pulled that out. Odo Gunga. Uh, nice. Nice. Five reference points. Um, Five Gungan points. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's like, why have you left? Uh, well, my mother, your mother cared about you. She I don't, wouldn't I'm leave like, you. Like, I don't know what the his fuck sister? is happening. Is this his wife? Is this his betrothed? What happened is to his mother? His, what like, happened to his dad? Yeah. Where has he been? Um, I don't understand this scene at all. And then there's this, you know, then, um, uh, Steppenwolf. I really, I had yeah. to think for his name. He steals a Martha box. He shows up to steal their Martha box. Yes. Yeah. They have like a whole war scene, fight scene that looks yeah. even more bizarre. And that's the like moment when Aquaman's like, okay, I guess I'll join the Justice League. My man. Um, so at this point now, I think, I think uh, Bartman has gone to go see The Flash. Uh, he's a poor kid whose dad's incarcerated. His mom's in jail. He's unemployed because that comes in later that yeah. he – Gets a job for the first time. Sure, whatever. Yeah, he at the crime lab. lives like Brewster McCloud. He lives like in some weird underground lair with a bunch of TV screens. Uh, yeah. He lives in some crazy lab and he's got this super expensive looking costume. He has a, a space shuttle design for right. his costume. But look, I don't know. What the fuck Who are you supposed to do? And he says know? he's like essentially. Uh, he has this whole monologue about how everyone's boring to him because he's life is can't so fast. relate to people. Can't figure out their rhythm. Right, can't right, figure right. out their speed. Yeah. And Batman's like, I want you to join. He's like, I'm in. Yeah. That's the joke where it's like everyone else is kind of like, no, I, I have my right. demons. And he's just like, cool. I need, I need friends. I need brunch. Friends. Right. Brunch, 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 brunch. Right. Which, like, all that stuff would be more effective if there was, like, a functional Flash movie about the Flash not knowing how to work alone. I Honestly, I don't mind it. I don't mind it in this movie. The Flash stuff works the best for me just because it's like, I, I get it. I know what the Flash is like. I'll say the it's Cyborg fine. one is the one that bumps me out the most because if they— well, the Cyborg one has, like, so much backstory so that much they backstory. can't get into. And it's also, like, now they've negated the origin movie where it's like Cyborg's the one of these characters who you want to see the origin for, story for because I guess so, the transformation's you know interesting. Uh, Him dealing with nah, his transformation. It's okay. Do you want to see some movie where it's just now Cyborg, Cyborg? Fine. Sure. Whatever. No, I want to see the movie where it gets in the car accident. No, I'm sick of car accidents. Doctor Strange just did one of those. Enough. We get it. I love car accidents. <laughs> you like Cyborg. Yeah. I didn't realize. I thought it was an explosion. It's confusing. Yeah, there's a car explosion. I don't know. Yeah. It's a car explosion. <laughs> his mother died because it's Joe Morton's wife died. Uh, his, right. his Martha died. 
Exactly. Martha died. And so Martha Jr., a.k.a. Cyborg. Yes. Uh, he, like, didn't die, but he's, like, wounded and he all becomes my man. Up. So Jordan, I mean, Jordan, fuck. Um, Miles Dyson. Joe Morton. Jo- Jordan, Miles Dyson. Miles Dyson from T2. Yeah. Skylabs him into a yes. Skynet's him. And he used the box as yeah. what? A way to bring him back to yes, life? That was the or technology. the box made his That's, body? Yeah, correct. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I just like Cyborg. I've been into future stuff lately, yeah. and I like the design of his character. I like that his like robotic uh, parts are still sort of organic, and that he can plug into other devices. Yeah, and I think that's yeah, cool. he's sort of Robocopy. Honestly, right. when you think about it, that's yeah. why I was getting into yeah. him. And it's also like he he's got the Martha box in his head, so like so it can kind of control he him. Keeps evolving, and they're like, we don't know if we can trust him because you but know, like again. All of these are like an idea that's floated with one line. You know, yes. it's like none of it's like baked into the movie. It's just kind of like a lot of ideas kind of get tossed out. Right. And then there's no time to really dig into it because like we got to go. So then there's that first big fight where they, they fight the parademons. Yes, where it's like James Gordon, Commissioner Gordon. Played by Academy Award winner J- J.K. L.O.L. Simmons. Exactly. He puts up the bat signal, and the Flash is like, ha, bat signal, bat, yeah. bat, bat, man, yeah. brunch, brunch, man. He's doing you know, a jazz set. Exactly. He does a jazz set, and then, like, James Gordon is like, uh, hey, there's parademons in the sewers. And so Batman's like, great, like, let's hit the sewers. Right. I know it. We'll, we'll you know, you know the Batmobile. Yeah. You know the bat plane, right? Do, do they have the, the Nightcrawler at this point? What's that? This one's got a lot of bad vehicles. Well, I'm saying like, yeah, that one that's, that's like, that's where he's introducing. He's like, right. what about the bat sewer? Right. Thing? The flying Fox. <laughs> yeah. These are the real names. Great. Um, there's the, there's a moment I liked. That I think it's pretty good characterization where the flash owns up to the fact that he's never been in a battle before. And Batman uh, says, just save one, just person. save one person. And it'll sort of go from there. Right. I guess that's in this scene. Yeah. Cause wonder woman's in this scene. Yeah. Fighting the parademons. You got Batman. I guess the cyborg show up. I guess he's involved. Yes. He's Aquaman like, comes in later. Right? Aquaman comes in when there's this like big wave just sort of shows up. Yeah. And then Aquaman is <laughs> just there, which is laughable, but whatever. Well, cause later in the movie, he kind of says like, I don't talk to fish. I talk to the water. Yeah. So he's Moana. Ooh, Moana. Can Make way. The coconut. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does. Consider the coconut. He does. If by coconut you mean mother box. Yes. Yeah. Consider the mother box. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so they, they try to kill the parademons and they do some of it, but they, whatever, so. who don't, I don't know. This <laughs> is when Doomsday is questioning the, the it's uh, Steppenwolf, not Steppenwolf. Doomsday. Yeah, Steppenwolf shows oh, up. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's right. He's kidnapped people because they yes. smell of Mother Box. Yes. <laughs> this is another of those, like, maybe we didn't thought of this later where it's like, because there's a bunch of scenes where they're like civilians, though, you know? Well, there's this one family they keep we'll on cutting to. to. We'll, we'll, we'll but they're to being that. set up this early, right? I know. We're seeing this family in Siberia or somewhere in Russia. And like. It's the Sicario move. I, like, let's keep on cutting to this guy with his son oh, yeah. who has no connection to the plot. And you just know from the beginning, like. These people are going to be in danger. Like you're just trying to humanize, as Will Dormer would say, civilians. It's a pile of garbage. Oh, okay. uh, what? Someone say my name, David. Let him sleep. What? I'm so tired. Let me Sorry. sleep. Sorry. Sorry. Let me pile of garbage. Sleep, Roger. Sleep on your cast, Roger. Promo code check. Um. Oh, Dormer is bleeding again. <laughs> Oh, man, it's really soaked into the carpet. <laughs> yeah. Someone call more tyranny. All right, Steppenwolf. Um, so then they get in a big fight. Then Why they get, does he leave again? I guess he just leaves again. They get in a big fight. That seal, is another scene that feels very weedy because it specifically feels like that scene in Avengers where they're all like, I don't know if we should be a team. Well, I guess so. And then Loki kills Coulson right. in that scene. Right. A fact that has been kind of conveniently forgotten in the MCU. Yep. Because now they're just sort of like, He's Loki's back. our bro. He's funny. Yeah. And Colson's still alive, but we're never going right, to. Right. And it. they're like, Colson's alive, but we're forbidden from talking about it in the movies. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Affleck at this, in this scene, has the, if there's even a fraction of a chance, well, which no, right. this got is the laughs thing. from the whole audience. This is the scene where he full on Affleck explains, Batman explains, yeah. to Wonder Woman that they need to revive Superman using, using the box. mother box, the yeah. Martha box. 
and putting they have to put Superman in the poop water from the last movie, Just return him to the water. diarrhea chamber. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're going to put him in it. We have to go back. We have to go back to the poop chamber. And we're going to put him in it and we're right. going to get a Martha box and we're going to like and then the Flash is going to run around yes. and make an electric charge and all that soup together will revive superman maybe if there's a fraction of a chance we have to do it wonder and woman's kind of like what if he comes they back bring evil? up a bunch of valid concerns right. you don't die and come back with everything attacked sure you know you're gonna have lost something what if it's his humanity what if right. it's his memory what if right. it's this also you're the guy who he thinks kind of killed him sure he's, he's not gonna be happy to see you. your face you had to fight him it was the dawn of justice right and so he's like well okay alfred Get plan B ready. Academy Award winner, Jeremy Irons. <laughs> All right, sir. Sure. I'm here right. at my console, I suppose. Right. So they go. They put him in the poop water. They need electricity at just the right moment. So like, the flash it's has like to run. literally just like brown, murky poop brown. water. <laughs> um, but now there's like scaffolding. Um, and then Superman returns. He is shirtless. Yeah, he's wearing, Bray, Braylock pointed out he's wearing what appears to be sweatpants, and I leaned over to Esther and said, yeah. "They buried him in sweatpants." And Esther started laughing. When you see him, because they oh, there's also a scene where they have to dig up his grave. Uh, yes, I think Richard actually uh, had the joke like, "This is a screenplay <laughs> that has the direction Aquaman <laughs> open Superman's grave." <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a scene where the Flash and Cyborg <laughs> dig up his coffin, but he's in wearing a suit. Uh, yeah, I guess so. And yeah. he's holding the picture of K. Cause that's right, the cause. That's right. That's his only appearance in this movie. Yes, and he probably got two million dollars. <laughs> sure, fine. Um, uh, but but he comes back to life, and I think Bray was the one who said, "Why couldn't he just have a beard?" If they knew Cavill had the mustache, mm -hmm. and it's clear that all of Cavill's stuff was done in reshoots because his face looks weird in all but two shots. His face looks totally weird. In all but two shots I counted in the movie, his face looks weird. Yeah. They should have just built a fake beard around his mustache. Your hair supposedly grows for a little bit yeah. anyway, right? Like when you're dead. When he's, he's a dark Kryptonian. Superman, who whatever. Gives a shit? Who gives a shit? He pops out. And, oh, who's here to greet me? Uh, two total strangers. Yeah, three don't, total don't strangers. Know them. Right, and then someone I kind of met for like a minute. Yeah, he X-ray visions them. He's like looking at them. Right, and he sees some weird things. Yeah, Cyborg's got a crazy rabbit body. Right, Flash is is freaking out. He's scared, or or Aquaman scared, whatever. Right, and he starts going bananas. So then they go to Plan B. Plan B is let's bring out Batman, that guy you fought. No, no, Plan B is Lois. That's C. Oh, whatever. Who That's what I'm saying. My point I'm trying to build up here is Lois should have been the plan A. Right. To calm uh, him down. Yeah, because it works. But whatever. No, it's just their excuse to have another Superman fights everyone scene. Yeah. Because he kind of, you know, digs in with Wonder Woman for a second. They kind of bash each other around. Yeah. Uh, I don't even Flash remember Flash tries it. to outrun him, but then he realizes they're he's the same grumpy, speed. He's grumpy. He's mad. Right. They sort of. He fast in that was kind of funny with that the eye. Good. The eye. Yeah. He like looks back at the Flash. Well, the Flash is kind of funny. Yeah. And then Lois shows up and he's like, oh, Lois, yes, right, I love you. Okay, dun, Clark Kent's back. Dun, dun, dun. And now he's Superman again. Should we talk about the fact that Danny Elfman's using his original Batman theme in this movie? And also some notes of the William Superman. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. He subverts it. But yeah, he yeah. uses the Batman theme in this, which I think uh, rules. I think it's cute of him to do it, but yeah. it is also, I was just kind of like, mm, no, I liked the Batman you did the music for, <laughs> like, back, sure. way back when. <laughs> uh, I will say, I really like dun, Zimmer's. Dun, 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 that. In case people don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really like Zimmer's uh, Superman, Superman theme. It's fantastic. I think it's really good. I think it's actually this movie's The Man of Steel score is fantastic. Phenomenal. Yes. Best part of that movie, unquestionably. Mm, I don't know. What about the big bug Russell Crowe flies around on? Oh, that part was also very good. Correct. Um, I will find him! There's some good stuff in that movie. Yeah, that movie's kind of interesting. That movie's like a five. Yeah. That's like a gentleman's five or six. Agreed. That's a gentleman's five. BVS is a gentleman's four. But it's like an this intriguing This is like a gentleman's four. three. Yes, exactly. See, I, I, I was watching this and I was like, how do I rank this 
against and like BVS. Suicide Squad is like a minus eight. Like that's that's like just on a whole other level of incompetence. Right. But like BVS, I was watching it and I was like fascinated, but also furious. Yeah. And this, I was like kind of bored, but indifferent. Yeah, that's fine. So that's, it's sort that's of a, a like pick take. your poison. Like I was right. kind of like, I guess these are both fours to me for different reasons. This movie is also so simple where it's just like the whole movie is he's got three boxes. He's trying to put them together. There are seven. They have to unite them six. before. There's six. But then why would the hashtag be unite the seven? Alfred. David, that would almost look like they didn't know what they were doing. Sure. If they set out a hashtag How years in advance and then cut one member from the team. I mean, imagine Green Lantern showing up in this. It would be cool. It, I guess so. Uh, so finally, spoiler alert. You thought he was dead. Well, we've already covered these fights all that. I know. I'm just saying. He's back. I can't believe it. He was second build and he's in the he movie. He has a whole Who scene where he strokes some corn. Well, then he goes back home. Yeah, they goes wait, back bring home. him back to life. And then he's just like, well, peace. Right. And then he's <sighs> like, maybe I'll show up at the right time in the point of the movie that I need to show up. And you're up. like, will he? Won't he? Who knows? I don't know. Superman will show up. But they cut to him stroking corn in the field, and I was like, oh, right. This is what it looks like when they put a camera in a place and they film actors in that Mm, place. Does it? That looked like fake corn to me. That stuff looked real to me. Mm -hmm. When they go to his face, then you see weird mustache. All of that would look disastrous to me. I think the whole movie kind of looks disastrous. Doesn't look great. Yeah. Yeah, he has like a moment with Lois. But again, this all the whole movie, everything feels crowbarred in. Yes. It's just like, yeah, oh, we need five minutes of him meeting his mom again. Okay, we did it. There's that weird Lois Diane Lane scene where they talk about grieving him early on that just feels like, well, we can't have Diane Lane Amy Adams in the movie and not give him anything to do. I guess so. But then it's like Lois Lane's arc in this movie is that she doesn't feel ready to like be a journalist again. Right. She's not ready for another piece. I'm sorry. It's a boom tube. What? That's what Steppenwolf is. Uh uh teleporting teleporting on it's called a boom tube okay according to wikipedia okay so now they decide we're gonna fight Steppenwolf. go fight seven so they go to the land of the red where this family that's been foreshadowed yeah they're kind of like where is to get away on their pickup truck it's also just outrageous though like they go to bruce wayne or star labs or something and they're like where could he be he's off the grid i don't know like well and then they figure out i guess using science or something like where he is they arrive there it's like he has made hell on Earth. It would be covered. I think you might spot it. Yeah. I think you could see that. Look for the red spot. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just like hell has exi- – has, yeah. he's like opened the pits of hell yeah. somewhere in Russia. So then they, they fight, fight, and fight and oh my god, Superman comes back. Yeah, what a surprise. Up. Like name me one hero moment that happens. I don't remember. Aquaman has his trident. He sort of throws it at some parademons. He says, my man. He goes like, Yeah. Uh, there's one point where yeah. he he lands on a parademon and, and surfs him down the building and the building collapses. Remember don't remember when, that. You nope. don't remember that when he surfs on a parademon's body? Nope. That's uh, the thing that happens. Flash runs around. I guess the Flash like puts pulls uh, pushes the car yeah. of the nice family who turn out to be not important. And he feels proud and he sees Superman, and he sees carrying, Superman a like carrying a building. <laughs> Batman doesn't really do much. L- let him be. Like, yeah. Batman doesn't need to get in some big robot and do robot shit. Just let him do some other shit. I mean, this it feels like four different movies like mushed together. Yeah, and it, it also feels like I, you know, in animation, but four bad movies. Yeah, I, you know, it's like they right. didn't really think through any of the movies. Right. Um, in animation, because animation is so expensive, they make sure their whole story tracks before they start animating anything. Yeah. You know. They do extensive storyboardings and they record voiceovers for those storyboardings and they film those storyboards time to the voices so that they can watch the movie play out in still images and know what the shots are and what the beats are and how the dialogue sounds coming out of a human being's mouth so that they can go, oh, let's change this, let's change this. That's the big reason animation takes so long because they spend two years on the story before they even start animating, yeah. right? yeah. And that's one of the reasons that like Pixar built this reputation is that they are just relentless about finessing every detail and making sure they don't push the movie into production until the story is perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. And even then, once they start animating, they'll still be comfortable throwing out what they have if they come up with something better. Yes. Andrew Stanton, when he did John Carter mm-hmm. and shot the whole movie and then they cut it together and said, oh, this doesn't cut together. Yeah. It's lacking most of the necessary emotional beats. He's missing coverage for these things. Yeah. He had to go back and reshoot a ton of it. Yeah. For a really high amount of money. Yeah. And that's the big thing they slammed him for. 
when that movie cost so much and it bombed so hard. Right. It was, was like, like he's an animator who doesn't understand. And like, because yeah. of his lack of understanding, we had to shoot the movie two and a half times. Right. And he said, I think in his sort of defensive, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, narrative rewriting afterwards, he said, you know, I just realized the way in which live action films are made is so counterintuitive. I would like to try to advance the development cycle so it's more like animated films so that you don't shoot the whole thing all at once. And you can go through – and it was this thing that's like you fundamentally don't understand the difference of these mediums, right? Yeah. Um, but what's weird is John in the Carter's time since – Agreed. It is. Like it's had this sort of critical re- revival. I think it's okay. It's okay and it has these good ideas. Yeah. But it, it's not a particularly good movie. I Like I've tried with that movie. Sure. It's like up my alley to like that movie. But it's just, more functional than this. And this movie yeah. has a very similar production history. And right. so did Rogue One and all these humongous movies. Rogue all... One's the most functional of all these movies. No, it is. It is. I'm not crazy about Rogue One, as you know. Yeah. Um, but it, what's nuts I is agree. that like when John Carter bombed so hard, it was like, this is a big lesson. And instead, all these big movies have been made John Carter style where they like push it, it in wasn't without a, a big script. Lesson. The big lesson was we have to do that better. Because what John Carter was, as you're saying, it was just like the precursor to this. Right. But they were like, oh, we, we realized our mistakes, and now we know how to, like, previs an entire movie. But these things where they just shoot the movie three times are, like, fucking insane. Well, this movie's going to make a billion dollars, so I go guess. eat a, a poopy sandwich. I guess, but, like, Thor's going to make a lot more. It's No, this movie's going to make about as much as Thor. And that's what— I disagree with that. Thor's been doing so crazy well overseas. That's true. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. I think this movie will do well overseas, Thor too. Thor is currently outpacing Wonder Woman, which is crazy because it's doing so well overseas. But neither of this is n- – none of this is important. Even if this movie makes kind of – you know, because its big rival this month is Thor Ragnarok, right? right? And it looks like it's going to open to about 115, something like that, which is similar to what Thor opened to. But significantly down from BVS and Down Suicide from Squad. BVS, above, but up from Wonder Woman. Which multiplied really well, which I Did, don't think I this know. is going to. No, I don't think I just, it is. I'm just saying – even if it made Thor money. Yes. That's not what your Justice League movie is supposed to do. No. Justice League's movie is supposed to make more. Yes. You know, you're, that's supposed to be your big team movie, like The Avengers, which always makes more. That's supposed to be your Their break biggest point event. is like $700 million. That's what they need to make essentially to go into profit. Yeah. So if they make they like a billion on the nugget. Yeah, but are they really going to make money? I mean, they're going to like have spent like $600 million in order to make like $10 million. I know. You know? Yeah. On and on it goes. When is super, when are, when are we going to stop with this? I don't know. I don't. I mean, know. I, there's. I don't. I I like this stuff because I like these kind of movies because I could check out when yeah. I watch them. But Th- there's been also, so many fucking superhero movies. There's when are we fatigue. Gonna stop? I mean, it'll come. The fatigue is coming. It's What's just What's the next thing though. It's just not going to happen know. yet, and it also doesn't seem like it's going to happen to Marvel. Marvel right. remains kind of like a step ahead on all this. <laughs> they stay on their feet, and they're like two steps ahead of the curve by trying to like change up the genres and everything. Right. And they're also just, yeah, they're right. They're in their like late phase where they're kind of like Taika Waititi comes and they're like, yeah, make your movie. You know, Ryan Coogler sets. comes and yeah. he's like, I want to make like an Afro futurist right. movie. They're like, perfect. Just do it. We need variety. And like, they also just point. have a track record. Like even if, you know, all the complaints against those movies are valid, they're all like fucking functional. But then like, if you look at like 2018, yeah, there's still a ton of superhero movies on the docket. It's like they're, they're not going to like decelerate anytime soon. Right. We've still like, we have like an X-Men movie coming. We yeah. have like two X-Men movies next year. They announced multiple man yesterday. I'm actually, so I'm kind of, I'm not that. really a person who creatively writes, uh, but years ago I wrote a multiple man movie. Really? Yes. Uh, you finished Todd, like a full multiple yeah, and man Todd script? Vanderwerf knows about it. He's read it. Hey, can I, I read it? No, it's bad. But like, you know, whenever I was, when I was like 18, it was probably okay. Yeah. You know, this is like my high school Fantastic Four script. Exactly. Like multiple man was always the one where I was like, that'd be cool if you did it right. But also it always seemed really hard because visually it's sure. just hard to do. Yeah. And my multiple man was always going to be Paul Rudd. Now Paul Rudd's, uh huh. he's, you know, he's Ant-Man now. And who is Ed Franco? Fine. You know, it's yeah. sort of, I, they're, they're in the similar pocket. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's like, they're doing it now. Right. Like yeah. they're doing the Peter David yeah. multiple man thing. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with all this. I mean, I'll say there are tinges. There were moments where, like, and I'm not a DC guy, you know? Yeah. There were moments where I was like, it is cool seeing all these characters on screen Agreed. together. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. I agree with you. It's kind of nice seeing them all together. Yeah. Kind of. Right. They're brief moments. Or and they're- again, 
there, I'll see an Aquaman movie. I'll sure. see a Flash movie. Like, it's not like I was so disgusted, you know. And there were moments where things were so goofily comic booky that I got, like, a little tinge of joy. Just like, this is so untethered, you know? But the movie is, like, it, it's, it's like, a cloud. It doesn't exist. Um, we saw it less than 24 hours ago. I, I can barely remember it. But do you remember? Shrug. The great post credit scenes of this movie. Okay, so one of them is the Flash and the Superman. They're going to race to see who's faster. The end of the movie. What's the end of the movie? I'm trying to beat even Steppenwolf. Remember. Oh yeah, well we just didn't we didn't say that. Oh, I yeah. guess so. Yeah, some Steppenwolf. people were on the edge of the. He seat. squishes the mother boxes together, and then like he unites the boxes, <laughs> and then Superman and someone else pull them apart. Yeah. Okay. Wonder Woman's good in this movie. I feel like we haven't talked about her much. You see her butt a bunch. Yeah. It's rough. Yeah. Yeah. And even when they go to uh, Themyscira, the Amazon's costumes, I know this has gone viral. It's gone viral. It's not quite as distinct as it looks in that tweet that kind of went out. Some of them have more of the... Uh, it's also less distinct because Patty you Jenkins never get costumes. clear shots of them. You never like, get clear, so but some of them definitely cut. have yeah. more basically like kind of just metal bikini costumes. Yes. Um, some of them look a little slave Leia. And nonetheless, with all that shit said, and this movie obviously has less Wonder Woman than yeah. Wonder Woman, uh, she's still like the best part of the movie and yeah. just such a movie star. Yeah, like, I got, she I, is. So I got a couple things to say about it. One is, yes, almost every like entry point into a scene is they start on like Wonder Woman's legs and pan up her butt and then they do like, the reveal thing everyone that Patty else. Jenkins, you know, avoided. They do it over and over yes. again. There's so much butt stuff in this movie. The way they dress her too is just so much more revealing. I mean, All David said yeah. her butt, you see her cleavage, like, right. her legs. The movie. There's just like a lot of like framing her around that. A little bit. But but here's the thought I had watching this. I could take a big swing on this one. Okay. I kind of think Al Gadot is is the female John Wayne. Okay. In this sense. Sure. What's the sense? The best thing I've ever heard about John Wayne, I forget who said this. This is like a thing a critic said. You mean the character Jackie Chan plays in Shanghai Noon, right? Yes, exactly. John yes. Wayne. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know that's that character's that's name is Chan Wayne. Yeah, we've brought it up before. Sounds like John Wayne. <laughs> yes. That's a terrible name for a cowboy. Go on. I'm Lightning McQueen. That was good. Thank you. Wow. 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 Sean Wayne. What is Melissa Villa Senor in here? Hey, now. It's her big impression. Um, the, the line I love about John Wayne I saw uh, Rio Bravo recently, and hey, I'd man. never seen it before. It's sure. a phenomenal movie. Yeah, you saw that in Paris? I saw it in Paris. Mm-hmm. Humble brag. I had Nan who lived in Paris once. You also. She wept. I felt so Without proud looking. of the fact that I was this artsy fuck and I went to Paris for three weeks and I read he my books. He got so books. mad at me about this. Do you know that David – oh, God. I lived in Paris for a second. And but, No, but tell tell Ben what you told me. I was a bartender. Oh, God, don't you want to fuck him? Yeah, <laughs> Isn't that the most romantic just, thing you've ever heard? Yes. It's like right out of college. David moved to Paris. He lived there for half a year and he was a bartender. Think about how it was I like, feel. It was like right after uh, I graduated from college. You at least have to go now. have – Fun in Paris. I've lived like, in New Jersey and New York City. <sighs> That's it. I've uh, left the country once. I remember one time, you know, I used to be- That was like, Cabo. I used to be like a city reporter. That's the only time you ever left the country? Cabo. That's it, Cabo, baby. baby. Mother, whatever. Um, one time I was at like some city reporting. I was used okay. to be a city reporter, you know. I Did you to, speak fluent French? Uh, fluent is very strong. I, I speak, I like, you know, I took French my whole life, you know. And I like read and write okay. And I when I live there, I feel hey, like I, hey, hey, you're a professional critic. You read and write more than okay. <laughs> when I live there, I do feel like I got my spoken French up to like up from embarrassing to yeah. like barely functional. Okay. And then it just, you know, it just sort of slips back to nothing. I can still only do transactional. I'm right. I mean mostly yeah. I yeah. I, I wasn't ever great. And you know, Paris, you were just in Paris, you know, they're yeah. They they kind of read you right away, you know. One hundred percent. Yeah, and they, the, they, they know appreciate you in English. Right. Yeah, I'm you rusty. Know. I can still do body shots, sort of. I don't know. <laughs> um, but so, you know, uh, I was gonna say, I was watching yeah, Rio okay, Bravo, fine. which All is right. a phenomenal movie, and I'd never seen it before, and I was so taken with John Wayne in it. And there's always this big argument because so many people love John Wayne, and so many people hate John Wayne. Well, I mean, you, maybe you hate John Wayne the man, but you know, screen presence is well. Uh, that's the thing. Lot, people you know. go like he's a shitty actor, and it's like he almost transcends acting ability for sure. Yeah, he's a movie star. He's a movie star. He's a presence. And the thing that I read this critic saying, I don't remember who it is, which I think is so spot on, is that John Wayne never told a lie on screen. Uh huh. He is so unflappably honest. Sure. Where even when he's heightened, even when he's not realistic, his line readings are like a little bit off. 
everything he says just reeks of honesty and integrity. And Gal Gadot has that fucking thing where it's like she's not the most technically adapt act- actress in the world. I think she's underrated a little bit as an actress. I think she is. But I also just think as a fucking screen presence, it's that weird thing about movies where like – Watching this film where they give her a lot less to do, right? Yeah, where she's they, in it a lot, but she doesn't really They're have. trying to give her stuff to do, I think, yeah. because, again, they realize, like, oh, fuck, Wonder Woman was a huge hit. But, yeah, she doesn't have a ton to do. But you watch the scenes where anyone else has to go, like, ah, Steppenwolf, he has the three mother boxes, and no one can make that stuff sing. Yeah, but she has so much authority on You just screen. believe her. She yeah. doesn't tell a lie on screen. Like, she, she's so fucking honest. Like, honestly, if I were Whedon or whoever, and yeah. I'm being brought in, I would really have been, like, we need to totally retool this movie. Take it away from Bruce Wayne and make it about Wonder Woman. But like you know, make her the leader of the team. Scrapping everything. No, I, that's I know, right. I know they would have probably have just said we can't do that. You know? And they also didn't know at the point that they hired Whedon that Wonder Woman was going to be like the most well received superhero movie in years. Well, they knew by the time he was reshooting it. I know it just made a little face. Yeah. Um. Anyway, she is very good in this. In the post credit scene, yeah, Superman races the Flash. So Drew and I are sitting there and we're like, man, what, who are all the actors who were supposed to be in this who are cut out of it? Jesse Eisenberg, right? Yeah. Joe Mangianello. And then final credit scene starts and it's Jesse Eisenberg and Joe Mangianello. So Jesse Eisenberg's out of prison, I guess. Now he's got a suit. Lex he's more Luther. like Lex Luthor. He's yeah. He's toned down the frenetic and A little bit. A little Still bit. basically doing his thing. But he's being a little more still. Here comes Deathstroke, who I think might have the same problem that Darkseid will have if they ever try to do him, where people are going to be like, that's Deadpool. Yeah, he's he the looks like Wilson. His name's Wilson. Is parodying, but of course, Deadpool right was a, a spin on Deathstroke. He got applause from our audience. That's horseshit. Can I tell you the other moments that got applause? Yes. The the when Superman says the "Do you bleed?" thing to Batman. That got applause. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then Batman has like a funny line where he's like, "Something's definitely bleeding." That didn't get applause. And then he goes, "I farted." <laughs> He doesn't do that. I think when Superman came back. <laughs> That's what the joke lines are like in I this know, movie. I know. When Superman, <laughs> Somebody smells. When Superman comes back and says, like, I stand for truth and justice, that got applause. Fucking hell. This audio but is, the a, this is applause, a real I was like, loose audience. This is just a Pavlovian response. You're just You're applauding just like, that a character somebody. you know is on screen. I guess so. Takes off his helmet. He's Joe Manganiello with, like, white hair. Isn't it time we start our own league? So they're going to have Deathstroke and Deadshot. One cinematic yeah, universe. Yeah, those Great. guys kind of cancel, cancel each, each other, other out. out. <laughs> Big time. And one of them is Will Smith. The other one yeah. is Joe Manganiello. Yeah. I think I know who I pick. Yeah. So that's Justice League. It's a movie, this I is, guess. I f- this is a bummer. Yeah. <sighs> I thought we were really going to have fun dunking on it, but honestly. It's not a dunkable movie. That's it's not the that thing. funny. It's just whatever. I don't know. They'll make a better movie later, I guess. The, the, the other problem is they blow, blew their wad. Next year, they have Aquaman in December. That's it. That's the only one. That's the only one on the docket. And then after that, it's I think Wonder Woman Shazam 2. and Wonder Woman 2 are the only... Shazam. Those are the two that are like. I actively... believe those are both on the slate for 2019. Obviously, Wonder Woman 2 is their crown jewel these days. Right. Patty Jenkins is returning. Gal Gadot is returning. Right. You know, And it's like Atlantis is cool. Yeah. You know, like that mythology yes. is so cool. And I, I have zero faith that they're going to do anything but james wan is cool yeah, i sure. like james wan a lot yeah you like him more than i do i like him okay he could make a good movie he could make a good movie I'm i think he's got good opposed sense to uh i like the conjuring movie so much right um but like you know i don't like you know saw that much like he only did the first one i'm not crazy about that one either. yeah it's but i mean like he set like a palette, you know, he was, it was an influential movie. Right. But like, I don't think there were a lot of good lessons learned from Saw. No, but I don't think blame him for the sequels. I think, uh, have you ever seen Death Sentence with your boy Bacon? I have. That movie's really solid. It's solid. I think that's a really solid movie. I think it's a solid. And Fury 7's an American masterpiece. Yeah. It's okay. He did an okay job with it. I, th- I, think, I think the Conjuring movies are his movies. good movies. I agree. The Insidious movies are okay. I've never seen the Insidious film. They're, they're, they're pretty good. He's I like okay. Him. I think he's a good filmmaker. I want to see that movie. Sure. Uh, I want, want to see that movie. Give me that bill. Uh, now we're just stealing other people's <laughs> bits. Pile of garbage. <laughs> uh, box Someone office game. Say my catchphrase. <laughs> Who's hey, talking buddy. about my garbage? How, how, you, how you been sleeping? Not great. I need a Casper. All right. Well, it's coming. Tell me that promo code again. Check. Ah, cool. Casper.com slash check. Let me sleep. Um, Box office prediction game. We don't get to do this often. 
uh, we don't get to do this often. So last week's box office Rank was, acted was 60, uh, was, 50. Yeah, Thor. Uh, what did we have here? Let me call up the weekend. Uh, yeah, so in its second week, Thor did 57. Okay. Daddy's Home 2 30 on did 29.6. Murder on the Orient Express did 28.6. Okay. Uh, Bad Mom's Christmas did 11. Jigsaw did 3. Not that great. And did, and nothing else open this weekend other than uh, Juice, Juicess League? The Dressed Us League? There's... I guess there's and not any wide. other wides because it's like, well, I think three billboards is expanding, but I don't think it's going wide. Lady Bird's going to continue to grow. Lady Bird probably make a couple mil this weekend. Lady Bird right? is kicking ass because kicking it's ass. like, it's in barely any theaters. And it's already in the top 10. And also because it's charming. It's the king of charm. Uh, yeah, the star and wonder are wide this week. Oh, okay. Wonder, I think, might do a little better than people are expecting. Wonder will get like 10, but it'll sort of... Yeah. It'll linger. I think Wonder will do like nine or ten. I think the star is going to fucking belly flop. The star is going to Delgo it up there. It's, right, it's going to do like five, yeah, right? It's going to do five dollars. It might break <laughs> yeah. the uh, Strange Magic's uh, record. Yeah. Uh, and then, you, yeah, you got Thor and Murder on the Uni Express lingering around. I guess you have Daddy's Home. Yeah, so what? I mean, Thor does 30 this weekend. Justice League will open, like I said, like 115, yeah. something like that. I think it did 13 in Midnight Previews, which is not great. It's not terrible. comparable to Wonder Woman. Right. Yeah. So I think I think we'll do 112 is my prediction. You got Thor, it'll do 30. Daddy's Home and Murder will probably have sort of decent drops and they'll do like... I think they'll both do high teens. Yeah, 15, 18, 19. 16. Yeah, maybe, I, think the, I think 18, 19. More. I think they're not going to drop. Bad Moms has been dropping really low. So, it, you know, like a nice short drop. So it'll do yeah. like seven. They're going gonna, to gonna need to come out with a Bad Dads to revive the franchise. Remember when they announced Bad Dads? Remember when they were announced a male Ghostbusters movie? Yeah. Fuck everything. I hate this industry. <sighs> it's terrible. What are we doing? Uh, well, we are wrapping up. Yeah. Uh, the year. Oh, oh, let's do this. And we're going to talk about the talk stuff about, we have coming up. Let's talk, talk about 218, okay? Well, so, next week. Many people have surmised that we are not starting a new miniseries before this year's no, end. No, why would we? Well, we never officially announced that. I guess we did and put out the calendar. Next week, we got quite a bonus episode for you. Mm -hmm. We are going to journey to the land of Pandora. Yes, that's right, my friends. I took a trip to Avatar land. And that's right, my friends. I didn't. You're lost. <laughs> Boy, did I have a ball of a time. You seem to get very sick. I got very sick. I <laughs> killed my immune system. I'm too old. I can't do it anymore. Uh, yeah, so it was a very fatalistic trip where I realized I have aged. Right. So we're going to talk about that. Yes. Uh, ben and I were talking. I think we're going to take some, you know, user questions. Sure. It might be uh, a little bit of a mailbag. Do bag. some mailbaggy stuff. We've been doing a lot of these episodes banked up way in advance, and we're already recording episodes for next year. So we right. thought, let's do an episode that we record very yeah. shortly before it comes out, and we're able to address more current event stuff. People like when we got hot takes on new yeah, movies. Yeah, we'll do a little of that. Um, probably be some new bummer controversy. Yeah, right. How many different fucking men are going to destroy their reputations and i don't know i hate everything i do too uh just have to unite the so look forward to that look forward to that episode <laughs> oh no but but before that is it before that yes next week's episode okay is our second sibling episode it's a siblings choice episode we brought on the great joey sims joey c sims and we talk about the film Lost in Space. Da, 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 da. The Stephen Hopkins film. Blarp. Uh, we blarp it up. Uh, that was awesome. We did that a while ago, but that was good. We did that five that years ago. That movie is fucking insane. Yep, it's crazy. Uh, that was the thing. Yeah, we were going to do SWAT. Joey didn't really want to do SWAT. We spent a while kind of talking around various ideas. Swatting around different ideas. And then like near the end, Joey was like, wait a second, Lost in Space. And we were all just sort of like, yeah, great. Okay, so we do Perfect. a Lost in Space episode. Yep. Then we go to... Avatar Land. Correct. Then the week after that is The Last Jedi. Uh, correct. Then we go on. Then it's Christmas. Christmas so, break. Yeah. When we come back, first week of Jan, you're getting the post. Yeah, baby. Um, and then we are starting our next miniseries, which we can officially announce. Second week of Jan. Correct. In On January 8th, 7th. Whatever. We began a miniseries on the Hollywood films of Paul Verhoeven. That's right. It is called Podship Casters. 
But Griffin, you said we would never talk about RoboCop. <laughs> I am giggling because I have pulled a fast one on all of you. I pulled the wool over your eyes. We're talking about RoboCop, my favorite movie. And it's a five-hour episode. Oh, God. Yeah, that episode was intolerable. No, it was fun. It was great. You had fun, right? I, I had fun. We I'm just so sort excited of we're doing Griffin. We just Griffin. Yeah. Even for a podcast that always indulges him. I RoboCop splained you. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just goes on and on about it. It's great. Yeah. It's great. So get ready for that miniseries coming up in January. We've got yeah. some exciting guests. But we're also going to do the post. Yeah. January, our New Year's Day episode, the post, post. Uh, the new Steven Spielberg movie, which we'll be seeing in 48 hours. Yeah. We're going to see it real soon. All three of us. All three of us. I don't know much about it. Based on the poster, it looks like it's about stairs. Yeah. It's a big old stair. Movie. I think it's a really good poster. I actually think it's a good poster. I also too. think that trailer's a lot better than a lot of people do. Yeah, I think the trailer's fine, but I also am kind of like, hey, guys, I mean, like, the Bridge of Spies trailer's pretty yeah. uh, mediocre, you know. That's how I feel, because everyone's tweeting at me, asking me for my hot takes on the Hotel Transylvania 3 trailer, and my response is, all the Hotel Transylvania trailers are bad. But also, isn't this one kind of exciting because Tartarovsky wrote, wrote it? He wrote it. Like, maybe it's good. Yes. I mean, uh, I mean, I know. Too. He had two original films set up at Sony. He really wanted to make a Popeye movie, and he had an original film called uh, Can You Imagine? Yeah. Both those got shut down. Yeah. He had said he didn't want to do Hotel Transylvania anymore. No, he's doing it. And then he said, I came up with an idea I really liked, and I said, if you let me write it, I'll do it. Right. So I'm a little excited by the fact that he's writing it. I know. It's fun. And he's such a good filmmaker. And he also, he did get to bring back Samurai Jack, and that was cool. It's not like he's, like, no. completely... I just want someone to let him make a Agreed. movie. Agreed. And for him to get the respect he deserves, squash and stretch. Yes. That's squash and thing. stretch, bro. Uh, HG2 is a mess, but it's still more interesting as a piece of animation direction than most American films. So that's what we got coming up next oh, it's all year. Yeah. <laughs> And we'll have our Blanky Awards, obviously, sometime in February. When when HG3 comes out, can we do a bonus episode where we do all three? I feel, okay. feel like I've talked about when does them it enough. come out? I don't know. We like literally when? Spring. Let's see when it comes out. July 13th. Oh, that's fine. Come on. Can we do a Hotel Transylvania trilogy episode? Yes. That's fun. That's fun. Ben, that's fun. People will like that. <laughs> all right. All It'll right. be fine. like the Jack Reacher episode. Yeah, Great. I'm, yeah. I'm slotting it in. Great. Get ready for that. Podtel, Castlevania. Oof. I just wrote Hotel Transylvania mega episode. Great. I'm so excited. I have won. Thank you all for listening. We, all we do is let you win. That's not true. You guys are fighting against me. You <laughs> press me at every turn. Uh-huh. I never I never get to express my thoughts on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's the real. I have no voice. I've been muffled. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Oh, can I do a quick merchandise spotlight? Jesus fuck. Very quick. Yeah, of yeah. course. There's a lot of like talking toys for Justice League. Uh-huh. Like they have like the, the figures that talk and also like the masks that talk. And the Batman one sounds like Bartman because they just do the modulated voice. It's just like swear to me. Right. But the other ones are so incredibly off base, I find them amusing. Okay. So the Gal Gadot doll has an American accent. Uh, she just that's... goes like, I'm from Themyscira. My name is Wonder Woman. Uh-huh. And uh, the uh, the Flash uh, toy sounds like uh, Bill and or Ted from The Excellent Adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think they're funny. If you're in a Target or a Walmart and you walk by the Justice League aisle, push that try me button. Those voices are funny. And don't forget to go to Casper.com. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. And Get a mattress. I got one. It was awesome. To make sure that you typed in check. Yep. Promo code check. Mm-hmm. Casper.com backslash check. Terms and conditions apply. A box the size. Of a mini fridge. Right. right. I got to call 911 or something. He's yeah, bleeding. he's very close to death. Yeah. Thank you, Will Dormer. Uh, please remember to rate, review, subscribe. Thanks to Ange Fergudo for our social media. Thanks to Joe Bowen and Pat Reynolds for our artwork. Thanks to Lee Montgomery for our theme song. And remember to check reddit.blankies.com for some real nerdy shit. And as always, Martha Box. Great.